The views and opinions in this program are not those of CESA 7 or Spectrum. A special board meeting to order. Now, I'll ask to um, or entertain the first motion. I move that the board convene in closed session pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 19.85, Paren 1, Paren E, deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business. Whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session, more specifically to wit, after school programming contracts pursuant to Wisconsin Statute. 19.85, Pren 1, Pren G, conferring with legal counsel for the governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or likely to become involved, to wit potential litigation matters, and pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 19.85, Pren 1, Pren C, considering employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. And pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 19.85, Paren 1, Paren F, considering financial, medical, social, or personal histories or disciplinary data of specific persons, preliminary consideration of specific personnel problems, or the investigation of charges against specific persons except for par Paren B, applies which, if discussed in public, would be likely to have a substantial adverse effect upon the reputation of any person referred to in such histories or data or involved in such problems or investigations. Any person referred, oh, to wit, emeritus, break in service, staff investigations, and safety and well-being of staff. Is there a second? Sandy? Aye. 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 Carried 6-0. Go across the hall. Yes. All right, Katie, you want to read the motion to take I us into the board, board reconvene in open session pursuant to section 19.85, print 2, Wisconsin statutes, to consider the balance of the agenda. All right, so we're <coughs> Thanks, Katie. We're currently in um, our special board meeting. I would entertain the first motion. I move that the resignations as presented be approved. Second. Sandy? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot about that. Um, need a second on the reconvening motion? Okay. Sandy, we'll vote on that first. Aye. Warren? Aye. Vandenova? Aye. Aye. Becker? Aye. Becker? Aye. Aye. Felton? Aye. Carried 7-0. And then, um, why don't you just read that motion again? Okay. I again move that the resignations as presented be approved. I move that the retirements as presented be approved. Second. Sandy? Becker? Aye. Sitnikov? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Vandenhoogle? Aye. Shelton? Aye. Warren? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Carried 7 0. I move that the termination as presented be approved. Sandy? Warren? Aye. Becker? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Sitnikov? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Shelton? Aye. Aye. I move that the employment of staff as presented be approved. Second. 
Carried 7 0. I move that the employment of Peter Ross as Chief Operations Officer, 12 months at the District Office Building at a salary of $145,516, prorated to $70,519, 2018-19-rate, 2019-20-step, effective January 2nd, 2020, as presented, be approved. Second. Um, can we have some just transparency and clarification around this position in general if it's restructuring or what's going on with it yes thank you um, yes I'd be happy to share that uh, this is a restructure for part of flattening the organization we are not hiring a chief human resource officer um, to replace uh, Jean Marsh we are not hiring a chief technology information officer and we are not hiring a chief financial officer this person will have oversight of those three areas as well and provide that it's a it's a one umbrella over those areas um, to to be able to lead those areas I think one of the pieces that's really important is that this person also has the licensure that's needed for um, um, a business business license which is part of the chief financial officer as well as ha can provide the leadership around uh, technology provide the leadership um, as well in the finance area and also in facilities as well as we move forward so it's intended to do some some broader oversight and procurement will be under there as well some of those important parts of that we will have executive directors in those departments and but we won't have the chiefs in the number of chiefs that we've had in the past thank you thank you I move that the employment of Diana Del Becky as community school resource coordinator, 11 months at the district office building at a salary of $46,021, to be prorated based on a mutually agreeable start date, 2018-19 salary, 2019-20 step, as presented, be approved. Aye. Maloney? Aye. Warren? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Shelton? Aye. Becker? Aye. Carrie Aye. I move that the transfers of staff as presented be approved. Second. Sandy? Becker? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Shelton? Aye. Vanden Aye. Warren? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Sitnikoff? Aye. Carrie 7-0. Is it here? I move that the is he here? Is Diana here? No, never mind. I can't see the podiums in the way. I move that the transfer of Timothy Larson, social studies teacher at Preble High School, 191 days at a salary of $58,177, to associate principal at Lombardi Middle School, 11 months at a salary of $84,923, effective August 1, 2019, as presented, be approved. Aye. Warren? Aye. Vanden Aye. Aye. Sitnikov? Aye. Becker? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Shelton? Aye. Carried 7-0. I understand Tim is right there. Right there. Here you go. Oh, okay. Congratulations, Tim. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. I move that the salary adjustment for Sarah Jansen, Principal Head Start Director, a.k.a. Sally, 12 months at Head Start Learning Center from salary of $103,415 to a salary of $108,615 effective July 1st, 2019 is presented be approved. Second. Sandy? McCoy? Aye. Shelton? Aye. Becker? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Sitnikov? Aye. Warren? Aye. Aye. Carried 7-0. I move that IEI general contractors be awarded the bid for referendum project work at Red Smith K-8 school in the amount of $2,349,316 as presented be approved. Second. Sandy? Becker? Aye. Sitnikov? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Vanden Aye. Shelton? Aye. Warren? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Carried 7-0. 
I move that Dell Technologies be awarded for the bid for computer monitors in the amount of $53,970 as presented be approved. Uh, uh, second. Sandy? Warren? Aye. Becker? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Zitnikow? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Shelton? Aye. Vandenhoogle? Aye. Carried 7 0. I move that CDW G be awarded the bid for Windows desktops in the amount of $519,000 as presented be approved. Second. Rhonda? Uh, can we just clarify um, how, I mean, how many is for, as far as like the amount of desktops we're talking about and how many schools we're looking mm -hmm. at? Mm -hmm. Diane Dush, Chief Technology Person. And I recall Joshua Patrick as well, our Director of Technology. So your question was how many um, and explain uh, where these will be placed. Okay. Josh? Yeah, this will be for 600 total units. Um, these will be placed at the secondary um, business ed and tech ed labs. These are project, project lead the way certified machines um, spec to run really high end applications like your AutoCADs and things like that. We'll be repurposing the existing machines where we can and sending those um, down into some lower leverage situations. Okay. How, how um, like what's the age of the existing it, it depends. At middle school, on the tech ed side, I believe those are eight years old. Um, Diane, the, the HP Z stations, I think, were bought in your first year? Yes. Yep. Old with the square monitors and very Yeah, so those are aged. six, seven. Yes, and yeah. Z machines. What's the shelf life of the 600, would you say? I'd be expecting to get four to five years out of them. How many? Four to five years out of them in in the tech ed labs and the okay. business ed labs after that they can be used elsewhere again these require more horsepower mm -hmm. okay thanks okay. welcome should we wait until the last one Sheldon aye Maloney aye Warren aye Vanden Heuvel aye Sitnikov aye McCoy aye Becker aye Carrie seven zero thanks I move that Technology Resource Advisors TRA be awarded the bid for Chromebooks with warranty in the amount of $328,000 as presented be approved. Second. They stayed around for any other questions. No other questions? All right. Um, Sandy? McCoy? Aye. Vandenhoogle? Aye. Becker? Aye. Warren? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Sitnikov? Aye. Sheldon? Aye. Thank Carried you, Diane. Carried 7-0. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <coughs> And that concludes. I move to adjourn this portion. All in favor, or is there a second? Second. All in favor of adjourning the special board meeting? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. We'll move right into our um, teaching and learning work session. Um, before I do that, I will uh, let mem remind members of the public that if you want to view the board agenda and handouts, for this meeting, as well as meetings minutes from past meetings, you can visit the district website at www.gbaps.org, click on our district, and then Board of Education. On the left menu, you will find a link to agendas and minutes. This link will take you to a website called Neptune, where all board agendas, minutes, and handouts from board meetings are housed. Also, we will have provide our community with two different opportunities during tonight's meeting to speak before the board. The first opportunity is during our open forum. The second opportunity is during agenda items where indicated by public comment on our agenda. All speakers must fill out a form indicating their desire to speak. If you wish to speak during tonight's open forum, you may do so with respect to items that are either posted on tonight's agenda or any other matter you wish to share with the board. Please know that Wisconsin's open meeting laws prohibit the board from conducting business on matters brought during this open forum. The board will also permit public comment <coughs> during agenda items as noted on the board's agenda. During this public participation time consistent with state and federal laws, board members may engage in dialogue with the speakers. In order that all voices are heard, the board will suspend engagement until all speakers have had a chance to speak. The process for speaking dur during our agenda items is as follows. 
The board will first hear the presentation and discuss the agenda item before calling on those who desire to speak. If you'd like to speak during a specific agenda item, please fill out a form and give it to Sandy at the end of the table at any point during the meeting. If you desire to speak and haven't yet filled out a form, you can indicate to Sandy that you'd like to speak and fill out a form afterwards. Sandy will provide the names of those wishing to speak to the board member conducting that part of the meeting and you will be called upon to speak at the appropriate time. Please keep your comments to five minutes. Prior to starting your comments, please provide your name and address. Lastly, demonstrations during public comments such as clapping or cheering in response to either public comments or statements made by board members are prohibited. Um, also, I, I'd like to indicate that we have all seven board members present tonight. Um, we're also joined at the table by Dr. Michelle Langenfeld to my left, our superintendent, um, Sandy Heller, who's our board secretary, and our intercity student council members, Jamie Barbian, who's our outgoing president. Is this your last meeting? Oh, it is. You're not coming in two weeks? Uh, yes, and congratulations. Uh, Jamie was is uh, from West High School, is our outgoing president for Intercity Student Council and a recent graduate. And our... <laughs> and our incoming president is from Southwest High School, um, Luke Pisani. So welcome, Luke. Um, so... It, uh, we do have two people who would like to speak before the board. Um, I'll call them up in the order received. The first one is Betty Kosick. Betty Kosick, I live at 2346 Browning Road, and I'm speaking for myself. I just have a couple requests. Um, we heard from Michelle Langenfeld just now that um, <coughs> about the changes in the administrative positions, and I, that's what my request is about, because you approved the administrative salaries in February. And I'm assuming that there have been maybe changes since then, obviously, and we know of a couple. So um, if you could give us an update on that at some later time, how much, it doesn't have to be how much we're saving, but how many, if yeah. there's any more positions that we've eliminated or, because obviously we know that we need to save money. And then the second request is, um, now it's leaving my head, oh dear. Um, I forgot. I have to come back. They'll come back, too. All right. Okay, thank you. We have two more people that... That's what happens <laughs> when Betty, we don't have two make more notes. people that are speaking, so if you remember, okay. then thank we'll you. have you come back, back up. She'll sit down and it'll come right back. Yeah, it'll come right back to her as soon as she sits. Um, Jamie Barbian is next. Hi, my name is Jamie Barbian, and I live at 1265 Denoyer Street, Green Bay, 54303. I'm a recent graduate as of yesterday evening of Green Bay West High School, the former president of ICSC and an international baccalaureate, baccalaureate diploma program candidate. I'm here to talk today about the IB program funding. Um, the IB program at West is a strong academic magnet that brings people to the school that is regularly referred to as the ghetto school. This program gives strength to our students and staff that when saying they work at or attend West are met with comments of disgust or concerns for safety. It gives them a rebuttal about just how academically strong West High School is, and I can say that without a doubt, the IB has made West High School a well-rounded, internationally minded, and academically accelerated school, regardless of what standardized, test standardized testing reports. However, to keep West on this upward trend and afford these benefits to students for generations to come, we need to support this program. West High is a school with high poverty and in turn high free and reduced rates. In an effort to provide equity for all students, those that qualify for free or reduced have their testing fees covered. 
This money comes from the IB budget. With this growing program, this number is increasing. We aren't talking about just a few hundred dollars, we're talking about more than a thousand. For one IB test, a student must pay a registration and a testing fee, making this test around $300. Um, for me, a full diploma student, I paid around $900 to test. With these high rates and many of our certificate students testing in at least two courses, our budget is quickly depleted in an effort to support all students' academic endeavors. Additionally, professional development and certifications are essential in this program due to IP's frequent curriculum changes, with IB putting out new curriculum for each subject every seven years. These trainings and cert certifications often take place in areas of the United States that must be flown to, such as California or Louisiana, and the fees for attending the program, which average around $800 per, uh, per participant, as well as flights, are covered by the IB budget. These essential exp expenses leave very little room for any other spending to improve the experience of the program. Particularly, I have an interest in the effects of this on our full diploma candidates. Within the full diploma program, CAS, or Creativity, Action, and Service, must be documented and submitted to the IB for review along with a CAS project, which is best described as a service project that the student has planned, collaborated with others on, and executed. This is a requirement to receive the IB diploma, and not properly performing in this category removes the ability to receive the diploma. However, due to our limited budget, there is very little funding left over to support this. I'd like to share a few examples of how this has impacted just this year's IB diploma candidates. One student was planning to paint murals in the foreign language hall for her project, but was unable to uh, afford paint without help from the art department. A student who wanted to host a, a dog washing drive to raise money for a cause when they was unable to afford the initial costs, such as shampoo. Um, another student whose project revolved around creating a new organization system for the prop room in the auditorium had to use Drama Club money to afford hangers for her project. As you can see by these few examples, we have very little money left over to support our diploma students. And I believe that if you're going to put an accelerated program in a school, you have to continue to support it. So I'm asking the Board of Education to make West High's IB program a priority and better support West students. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. <clears throat> um, and next is Joel Dinney. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm Joel Dinney, 221 Hood Street, apartment 215, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54302. I was going to actually speak on this during the agenda, but I have some stuff I have to get done at home, so I had to speak now. I'm disheartened, angry, and dismayed at the fact that AIR needs another $286,000. We've spent over $394,000 so far. This is unacceptable. I would not be a good voter or constituent if I didn't say what needs to be said. I called a few of you the last time this was going on. I've talked with you a lot about this. I've also made my comments on the Greater Green Bay Society of the Lama and elsewhere, voicing my displeasure at this, as well as other politically minded and politically aware people here in the Greater Green Bay area have also expressed their dismay and anger towards this consulting program. This is a huge waste of money. You could hire two people who, ju who just retired out at UWGB for half the price that we're paying these guys out of what? I think they're based out of Atlanta. They don't care about us. And now it's back. They need more money, like Oliver Twist. Please, sir, can I have some more? I told you this was going to happen then. Y'all said it wasn't going to. You said, oh, we need a needs assessment done. OK, great. We could have done that on our own. We have, peop we, have, we have dozens of people in this district that are making over six-figure salaries a year. You mean to tell me that all those people, all those people couldn't come together and say, hmm, there's a problem at Washington Middle School and other schools in their area. You know, we have all this education. We have PhDs. We have master's degrees. We should be able to figure this stuff out. And if they can't, then they should be fired, period. I'm sorry I'm getting angry about this, but this is a waste of money. We just heard th hundreds of thousands of dollars of money being used for technology. We've seen hundreds of, uh, we've seen several million dollars for construction. And now you want to take over 
$600,000 and give it to a company not even here in Wisconsin, but some other out-of-state firm, because we do not have the brain power in Green Bay, Wisconsin, in the greater Green Bay area, to come up with solutions? You got to be kidding me. This is the best we can do. And I think everybody on this board that supports this idea needs to really re-examine. They need to re-examine who they are, who they represent, because it's clear you're not representing the people that got you here. It's clear you're representing someone else. And that's what, it, that's what upsets me. Just a few minutes ago, hundreds and thousands of dollars being given away, hand over fist. But yet we have kids that have trouble getting food. We, have, we don't have enough social workers in our schools. We don't have enough mental health professionals in our schools. That's how you fix Washington. You get a few school social workers in there full time. Several, not just one that floats around to different schools, but you hire several. And you could have done that for this amount of money. You could pay them about 60 grand a year starting, maybe about 50. I just graduated with my MSW, non school social work, but. 45, 50 a year is pretty good starting wage for someone with a master's degree. They could have come in here and they could have helped fix this stuff. We have access to a bunch of different peer-reviewed articles and research and all sorts of things, but you didn't do that. We, had, we have several interns in the MSW program that intern with GBAPS. No one ever asked them for their opinions on these things. How do we fix things? But yet in our classrooms every Monday, for, every other Monday for seminar, there were school social workers complaining about the issues that were happening in our schools. That's great that we heard it as students. It's not great that, that, that their concerns are falling on deaf ears. And that's why I'm up here tonight. Because you need to hear it again and again and again. You work for us, not yourselves. You work for us. And that's what needs to be said. And that's why I'm saying it. That's all I've got to say now. Have a good night. Thank you, Joel. Thanks, Joel. Oh, Betty remembered. No, go ahead, Betty. Um, I just wanted on record that there were 99 administrators le uh, this year, and there were 140, no, 104 on the list for next year. So uh, just the number is all we need. I mean, I don't need money or whatever if you do report back. And um, then could you also tell us if the administrators and managers are going to be included in the um, out-of-pocket changes and the deductible changes that were approved for the staff, too? Will they be included in that? So. insurance, you mean? They are. Yeah, yeah the yeah, health insurance. Yeah. And the 104 number is from what year? That's next year, 1920. 1920? Yes, I have the list at 2020, home. 2020, you mean? 2020? Well, starting 19 oh, to oh, 20. 19, you 20, approved so it in February. Oh, well, we have to, we can't. Yeah, so yeah, I we'll think we can get that get information. To, yeah, get that I'm, sure. I know it's not in central based on what we're doing here, so. That's the piece. There so. might be changes. That's just all we're wondering about. Yep, yep. Wondering I about. think it's very fair. I think okay. we can pu we Thank publish that for anyone to look sure. at. Sure. Thank you. Yep. Okay, thanks, thanks, Betty. Thanks. All right. Um, is there anyone else who would like to speak before the board? Seeing none, we'll move to our discussion items or to teaching and learning work session that will be facilitated by Katie Maloney. Thank you, Brenda. <coughs> we will start with. Uh, a couple of discussion items. The first one, board meeting dates. Um, that one I put on here, we have a uh, July 11th retreat that we scheduled the last time we were here, and I know you may or may not. I'm good. I can You're good. Here. Okay. Yep. So um, we will keep that then. That makes that easy. There wasn't anything else, right? July 11th, right? Yeah. From and that was the 8.30 to 4.30. That still works. All day. 8.30 to 4. I can be here now. Yeah. 8.30 okay. to 4. Great. Perfect. Thank okay, you. good. Um, and then uh, the next one is a discussion about work group meetings. I've heard from um, a number of board meetings and also 
the um, district office administrators that um, they're hoping we can go back to having those work group meetings ahead mm -hmm. of board meetings. So like the teaching and learning would be Katie and Eric meeting yeah. the week before Finance. your work session um, with John and um, Vicky. Vicky and uh, um, same with operational support and also monitoring reports, which is Laura and Rhonda. Um, and I was attending those at one point. Um, and then the other question is the, uh, um, we also had the behavior work group, whether we want to start that back up again. Culture and climate. Culture, Culture and climate, climate yeah, yes. sorry. I always forget what it's called. Culture yeah. and Culture climate, climate work group. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so the, the, we, we stopped doing them at, at uh, um, when there was question about posting meetings, um, we were thinking that people could ask their questions individually, um, but now it looks like it, it would be easier for everybody to have those scheduled meetings. Um, we would need to post them, and the posting would have to be a, a detailed agenda like we do for board meetings, so exactly what would be covered at each of those meetings, which would mean that when you're at the meeting, you can't stray from what the agenda is it also means that once it's scheduled it can't be just you know rescheduled because i can't make it can we reschedule for a half hour later kind of thing um so it would have to be pretty um strict in terms of that and um because i know that um i was talking to sandy today about posting and um you know you post at least four in order to make the paper you post how many days ahead of time? In order to make, like on a, on a Friday, I send it out and it gets in Saturday or Sunday's paper. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the paper needs a couple days. A couple least. days. So when we, you know, you can repost, but, but if you're reposting less than 48 hours. 24. Well, no, if you're posting um, close to that 24 hour requirement, it doesn't make the paper, which right. then causes, then what do you have to do and it doesn't make the paper? I can't and remember. I have to get it to the city of Green Bay and Brown County Library to post in their front entrances. Hmm. Okay. So anyway, just to give board members a general sense of, of um, when we're reposting, and also it, um, it costs money every time we post. So if we post a meeting and then repost it, it's, it's um, money extra money. Is it 100? We have to pay the for people the newspaper, the newspaper right. Right. Okay. to post. Right. Yeah. Okay. But you you also have to pay when you have the library posted. No. Okay. Just the newspaper. Just the newspaper. So you can do the library if you miss the deadline for the newspaper. Yeah, because we need to have it posted then in three locations. If it misses the newspaper, it, it has to newspaper go to three, three places. Locations. Can you just go to those three locations right off the bat, or no? Does that not work? Instead of the paper. Instead yeah. of the paper. I'm sorry, what was that? We've des Ms. Melissa just said we've designated the paper as our official, official posting. Right. Okay. So people know where to look for it. In the past, though, these work meetings, they were standard, and it was the same time every month, the same, the same we date. We tried to be, we tried to be yeah. except, okay. you know, people's work yeah. schedules and right. things, and, you know, right. generally they're scheduled for a certain time, and they happen at that time. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, it, again, if you know you know, two weeks ahead of time that you can't make your meeting, you know, then that's reasonable to repost. But if it's two days, you know, the day before, um, if it's less than 24 hours, there's no option to repost at all. If it's if it's close to that 24 hours, then it's um, uh, requires po posting it in three places and things like that. Rhonda? So then, and I can appreciate that, but the nature of my job is it's very fluid. I can literally find out the night before that I have a, a, a shoot that I have to work on, and I'm going to take that job. Right, so then you just wouldn't be able to attend the meeting because right. it's posted. Yeah. But I'm just saying if it's, you know, I'm hearing that it's a matter of, um, it seems like it's kind of a hardship to reschedule and there's a financial aspect of it. I'm just saying I'm not sitting here tonight committing to that because I just can't. Being no, online. and, I, and what has what, happened in the past is we've participated remotely, mm -hmm. if that's an option. It's never an option because I work. It's never an option because I'm working or you're not. 
Well, right. when I'm working, I'm they're right, recording something, to. or I'm with a I'm with someone, so there's just right, no way so around it. So then, what we have done in the past is um, you touch base with one of the either John or depending on who mm -hmm. your group meets with, touch base with them later, and they'll fill you in on everything we've discussed. Mm -hmm. The benefit of these meetings is that we're more informed before we come to the board table. And I personally have missed it terribly since we've stopped doing it. I, I just think there, it's one more chance to, to get information and to clarify things before we get to the tables that we can have a more um, succinct discussion at the table. Andrew? Uh, I'd be interested in hearing, and I'm, I'm all, you know, I've, I'm all for and I've, I've advocated for more, um, you know, more video, more visibility. These work group meetings um, were always by design uh, to board members and designed to, you know, take care of some nuts and bolts questions. They don't, they don't make policy. They don't. No. Um, so I'm just, I'm just curious as yeah. to why they, um, why they need to be posted because and then why wouldn't everything that contains a board member need to be there, posted there was actually a change in the law so hi the <clears throat> wisconsin supreme court in the krieger um, versus appleton school district decision clarified when meetings need to be posted and particularly um, where there is a committee or a board policy that sets up work groups that is an official function of the school board and therefore those are official committees of the group so it's not just about how many um, individual and I did do an, a legal update for the board on that decision when it happened at the time so you could probably I can resend you that uh, memo uh, it's not just about a numbers test it's about the purpose as well and the purpose of those work groups is to do the work of the board and therefore they need to be posted so the, the committee is so I, and I that was a good legal update and I, I guess maybe I read a little too too quick but I'm uh, I know that if it has any, if, if a committee is tasked with any authority, then for sure. But even if a committee has no authority, has delegated no authority on its own, it still falls under this decision? You've created those committees as a function of the school board, and they're in school board policy. They're in your, um, in the 100 series policies. Therefore, they need to be posted. OK. So the meeting that the president and vice president and superintendent has every week is po posted as well? That meeting does not need to be posted. Um, the Supreme, I'm sorry, the um, Attorney General clarified that those are um, ministerial duties, those are... Um, but they're literally creating an agenda. Correct, yep. And, Which will and take creating action an, Yep, well, but they're not they're not taking action they're creating no. the agenda for which you will take but we're action also not on. taking action at the committee level as well mm -hmm. but those are they're discussing items that will be on your agenda but the, they're actually building an agenda when it's the president vice president and superintendent correct I can send you the information related well to I'm that. just wondering just right now how that's different well, I don't have it in front of me but I can send you the specific information so I don't misquote it for you so that meeting is definitely not posted the meeting doesn't. The meeting with the superintendent mm -hmm. the, and the board president does not need to be posted. Hmm. Do other districts post those meetings? No, no they, do not. they do not. Okay. Hmm. Thank you. Any other questions on? When we discussed it, we would hope to start in the fall if that works. I mean, I, we thought that we could maybe get a more standard dates and things to. Sure. With summer schedules that might be a little more challenging. Can I just yes, add, sir. sorry, I know we said this right when we started, the, there's three work groups, teaching and learning, organizational support and culture and climate, are those monitoring. the, monitoring. and monitoring. Thank you, Melissa. Okay. And we would have two people on each one, is that what well, we, we are thinking? we can have up to three, right, Melissa? At these Four meetings? Yeah. If, right. Yeah. yeah. And we would, so anyone could be on one or as many as they want, essentially, yeah. because of that. Oh, yeah. Eric, you said you want to be on all four? No, that's not what it's Oh, sorry. Someone could <laughs> hypothetically. 
be on all four. <laughs> so right now it's officially the teaching and learning is Eric and Katie, Laura and Rhonda are monitoring reports, Christina and Andrew are organizational support. Um, I was going and I was on monitoring reports also and then um, the culture and climate work group was Katie and Laura. Yeah. So and Ed, and Ed but yeah. Right. <clears throat> so if there's an interest in in being a third on that, Christina, Christina wants to do culture and climate. Okay. Um, so I, I guess each of those work groups will have to work with their respective um, the people that the administrators that that are, are at those meetings to determine time and then let Sandy right, know posting. Um, is there? Vicky. Vicky. And is, is there a reason we wouldn't do them this summer? Schedules, agendas. It might be good to start in, in August. You mean your schedules? Like, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right, vacations and things. Yes. So we could maybe start in August? Okay. Yeah, probably. All right, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to say that, I, I mean, I'm like Katie, I've kind of been missing these as well. Having a, that upfront opportunity to sort of say, you know, can you expand more on this at our meeting? Can you, you know, include this in our meeting? Um, Katie was always really good at saying, you know, I think maybe we should have more of this or less of this or whatever, just kind of um, flesh it out a little bit uh, to kind of anticipate what people might want to hear. Um, and uh, I mean, it's, it's not a huge thing, but it, it did distill sometimes what what we were going to talk about, and that was helpful. So, just as, as a follow up to that, what it really helped for us was define the work, and I think that that's an important part of, of moving forward is a shared understanding of the work, yeah. and and that really helped us as well. And then I think um, that the spacing of those were usually between the work session and the board meeting, right? No, no it was, right was before, before, the, before work the work session. Before. Because it enabled us to take a look at the agenda in draft form. Okay. And respond, ask questions, ask for more information or say too much information or whatever. Right. Just to kind of have the, the conversation about it. And you come to the table with a, a better background. It just is, I think they're very effective. Especially if you're going to have shorter meetings. You know, it's just good for relationship building and... That's exactly what I was going to say. I think the information sharing is important, but just seeing each other right. aside from being here, right. it will help to create stronger right. binds in as we move towards the With facilitation. Administration. Yeah. Yes. So, and the two-person specification is um, in terms of my, uh, facilitating these meetings, like Eric will, you know, once you're comfortable, we will alternate facilitating the meetings just like you will alternate with Andrew facilitating the operational and you can alternate with um, Laura facilitating the monitoring report. That's the intent of the two people assigned to each of those three. And then we don't really specifically report out on culture and climate, is that it? Culture and climate, yeah. um, But that's the more the structural piece. Okay. All right, so then that's the report. So now we'll get into the discussion and okay. public comment pieces. And I'll begin with the course essential documents and resources for world language, Spanish, and French. We're joined at the table by John Magus, John unless he's language. leaving the room. And we've got. Because this, this is public comment. Does that mean that that's public comment? Because it's after the work group. So that would be public comment about the work group, but not about the coursework. Oh, Dean, they can hardly hear me. Are you, Katie, Laura, Michelle, Those are the only ones who've been. There we go. Thank you, Dean. Can you hear me now, Betty? Thank you. Can you hear me now? No. Uh, is mine on? I don't He's trying to put them on one at, one a, at time. a time so we don't all talk at so once. That we don't have Okay. Oh, there we go. I'm on. Now you can turn me off. They're all on, but everybody's on at the same time. Oh, okay. You're saying it's us? Yes, it's blaming us. Let's <laughs> see how it is. All right. Again, with the world language, Spanish, and French. There we go. Sorry. 
No, that's no okay. Did you have anything you needed to share? Uh, yes, I just wanted to say that uh, we appreciate the time for the board to consider these course essential documents. There are a number of subject areas that we'll be addressing. The first one is related to world language, uh, Spanish and French. And um, part of the reason why I wanted to address this separately is there have been a number of concerns that have, been, that have come uh, during public um, session or public forum related to our backing of French. And I just want to show that partially through, through this process that um, we're continuing to review and revise our documents and provide support for all of the languages. All of the languages are important to us and uh, it's based on course enrollment. But the work we're bringing forward here is really a summary of the, uh, the work to date around making sure that those world language courses are vital, engaging, and serving the needs of our students. And uh, this evening, Dr. Khan will be here presenting first on the Spanish and French courses, which reflect curriculum updates to existing courses. Um, he's going to summarize the work that we've completed this year in order to support an updated and logical progression of learning for students who are seeking college readiness and, and beyond in these elective areas. Um, and then uh, I won't jump back in for the Chinese Five, which will come next after this, but that's, going, that's presented separately tonight because it is a new course uh, curriculum so that we can expand our progression of Chinese to a fifth level as well. Um, as he gets started, I do want to thank Dr. Khan as well as all the, the principals and the staff who have participated in the process. It's not an easy task, um, and their dedication to the work is very much appreciated. Dr. Khan? Thank you. Thanks. Um, so the world language curricular updates that we're bringing forward tonight reflect a continuation of the work we began last year. Last year, the Spanish departments updated the Spanish 1 through Spanish 4 courses. Tonight's proposal updates the remaining Spanish courses as well as the French 1 through French 4 courses. Um, so there's three elements to uh, the proposal of the updates. The first one is to divide the current Spanish 5 course into two courses. And this actually reflects existing practices between our high schools and just puts them in more of a, a, a specific way. Um, both courses are aligned to the same standards, but the, these courses are identified as literature, language literature courses, and so they, um, the, the literary resources used in them will reflect the students' differing levels of literacy. So the intro to Spanish language literature will be offered for students in 9th and 10th grade who take this course after Spanish 4 at West High School as part of the, uh, that school's requirements for the IB Middle Years program. The other course, the Survey of Spanish Literature, will be offered for students in 11th and 12th grade, preparing them for college level literary analysis. Second, um, advanced placement Spanish. There are no curricular changes to the course, but the proposal is to offer this course as a dual credit course with UW Green Bay's Spanish 202, fourth semester Spanish. And then finally, the proposed updates to French 1 through French 4 will align these uh, French courses to the um, exact same learning outcomes as was approved for the Spanish 1 through Spanish 4 courses uh, last year. So all of French and Spanish will be meeting the same uh, learning outcomes at the same levels. Uh, the curriculum will continue to identify students' language development in the reading, writing, speaking, listening, as well as the study of multiple French-speaking cultures. And I'm happy to answer any questions. So just so I understand clearly, both of the, the two different courses that used to be Spanish 5 are both year-long courses? Correct. They're just geared toward the different levels? Right, yeah. What we were finding is the, the what West was needing to do to meet the ninth and 10th grade right. levels differed from the other three schools. And then um, the AP Spanish class, um, can that be taken without taking Spanish 5? Correct. Yeah, uh, okay. Spanish 4 is the official prerequisite, but okay. for students who are looking for a capstone experience, Spanish 5 would be an inter, uh, in between one. And that's one of the reasons for renaming of Spanish 5 is the way it was numbered previously, it, it, it implied that Spanish 5 was the next level of language development when it really was a literature course. Right, right. And the next level of language development was actually AP. And then for, because for students that aren't in the IB track, the highest they get in their in their language is they finish four at the end of their junior year. They, they all, if they've taken so, one. So that's why I asked the question, yes. can you take either AP or the, the, inter, or the survey of Spanish language literature because they could take both 
or they could take one or the other as seniors. Correct, correct? depending on what school they're at, yes. Yeah, right. Jamie? So I, I believe at West what's been happening for Spanish 5 is it's offered, it's just in conjunction with a IB Spanish 1 class. So you're still able to move forward. You don't have to test. You can take it your senior year. It's just within the um, IB Spanish year one uh, class, just so everyone knows that. OK, thanks for that clarification. Any other questions? Just a quick one. Where does it, the dual credit with UWGB, is that then like a three or four credit course? Um, at GB, what is the... This one, their fourth semester is three credits, I believe. I would have to go back and check on the exact number, but it's three or four. I just can't remember which one between this and Chinese. One of them is three, one of them is four. Okay. And then would this still put our students in a position because you can, as I recall, take a, an upper level language class at one of the colleges and then get several credit if you pass that successfully you get several credits in that foreign language we still have that in place correct and this actually formalizes that process so a student who, um, who takes AP they're only taking the test a student who's in the dual credit course and decides to take it for UWGB credit okay. if they earn a B or higher in the class not only do they earn the credit for the fourth semester but they will automatically earn the retro credits for third second and first semester as okay. well okay. so they can earn up to I think it's 13 credits um, from this one course with a B or higher grade. Okay, yeah, I remember doing that as a back in the day. All right. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, thank you. We'll move that forward and go on to World Language Chinese 5. Sure, and the proposed Chinese 5 course is the next offering for students who are currently enrolled in Chinese 4. Um, these course outcomes further build on their prior learning as they use and understand the more complex language structures. Um, in addition, this course is proposed to be offered uh, as dual credit with UW Oshkosh's uh, fourth semester Chinese. Uh, their course number is Chinese 211. And I'm happy to answer questions on that one. Questions or comments? Brenda? Um, since we have very few do we, I assume we have not a lot of students qualified to take Chinese 5 in our district? Is that? There, there aren't, uh, and I'm not and sure. And so my question is. I apologize, I don't think my mic is working, but. Uh, so my question is, if sure. we have so we few, do, we how do we Right, we're, we're uh, currently working on and establishing uh, virtual learning opportunity, so a blended classroom environment, uh, thanks to the support of Diane Dirsch and technology. Uh, so that the students in, in various settings will be able to interact with that with the uh, Chinese 5 course. What that allows for is, because we have a number of students exiting from Da Vinci, for example, who are needing Chinese 4 as freshmen, Chinese 5 now, that they will be able to take the course uh, without having um, separate offering for necessarily two students or something like that at, at one particular site. So it allows us to offer more courses and I think it'll also allow us as time goes on to think about uh, virtual options that would allow us to maybe have integration with, with uh, cultural elements and, and uh, focuses from perhaps other countries even. So I think it's a great opportunity for our learners and a great opportunity for us to be uh, able to provide a wide variety of courses and be fiscally responsible. That was one of my questions. So would it be possible to um, include in the next update the, the numbers of students in the Chinese, the various courses? Sure. I'd be curious to, to see what the enrollment actually All looks like. One, two, three. Yeah, I'd just be, if that's, if it's sure. not a big deal, you could just. Yep, I'll take note. Is that okay? Rhonda. So other than Da Vinci, where are the Chinese programs starting out? Are there, is there anything else in elementary just or? Just Da Vinci. Secondary, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that going to grow? Do you anticipate? Pardon? Do you anticipate that changing, John? Um, well, I think it's, one thing we're working on now is really uh, the a task force to review our, our uh, efforts as a district in providing world language courses and that will allow us to take stock of, of what is our future vision for the district. Um, we have broad, we'll have broad representation on that, on that group and I think that will be something that we'll be looking at 
both through the task force and we've also uh, looked at having some, some research uh, program evaluation to determine what is the feasibility of offering such a wide variety of languages. As a former world language teacher myself, I'm very, uh, very much a promoter of, of access to world languages. Uh, we also have to be careful, though, to an extent, if, we sh if we're starting a wide variety of languages from different starting points, and they're all coming together, the tributaries within uh, high school expecting and needing diff a wide variety of different, offer different offerings, we have to make sure that we're responsible in what we're choosing. Laura. When do you anticipate that task force um, starting their work? We've been um, planning for it since uh, last year. We always knew we would run our initial meeting in June um, in a couple weeks, actually next week mm -hmm. now. And um, the purpose of that meeting will be to uh, work with um, district staff to identify the key questions that we would then bring forward to say, please help us answer these questions. Do we have your approval to pursue these types of questions um, so that we could engage in the next step in the process? It's really about defining the questions next week to be clear because we know that there are staffing questions, uh, there are language access questions, frankly there are equity questions. Um, our largest um, multilingual populations in the district um, do not all have access to continuing in their a home language and we are lacking in honoring the culture and the language that goes along with the families that we serve um, in, in many of the instances. So we are um, interested in exploring what those questions are that will come out of that group next week. And, and who would you like to be on that? Who do you, who do you want to hear from? We would, well, the, the, the membership in the initial meeting is folks that, um, that are connected to, it's district staff. Um, but as a result of the questions that come out of that, it would be up to um, the next level, whether it be, out, um, and, and I'll defer to my supervisor to help work to determine whether the board would be asked to provide clarity on who should be part of that or whether the program evaluation process would help de determine that. I, I, that's, I so think what- you're in, the, you're in the very initial stages right now. Yes. But we'll hear about it again soon. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. The last time this study was done was approximately five, six years ago, or uh, sorry, well, seven years ago, 2013. actually, 2013. And so um, that'll be shared as an overview of the group next week to say this is, and some of the folks that'll be present next week were part of that probably seven years ago as well, so. And actually, it looks like we do have enrollment information on Chinese as well, which we can forward on in an email, but I see we do have it. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, we'll move that forward. And now we'll discuss Washington Middle School Fine Arts courses. Dr. Khan will now share with you the results of some of the work that he co-facilitated with the Fine Arts Coordinator, Ms. Brenda Mullard, in support of the continued development of courses and curriculum that is associated with the arts pathway running through Washington Middle School. Dr. Khan. Okay, switch, switching gears on this one. The Washington Middle School for the Arts started a sixth grade arts house at the beginning of this school year. Next year, the arts programming is being expanded into seventh grade. The proposal you have is a three proposed 12 week course rotation, which will allow students in the arts health to, in some cases, build on their learning from sixth grade, and in other cases, to learn about new arts concepts. So there's three courses as part of this proposal. There's the theater performance and production, where students um, continue learning about develop continue learning about and developing their acting skills at the same time they're introduced to new um, information related to the technical aspects of theater the second course introduction to dance is the first um, opportunity in the arts programming to offer dance for students and it provides them a very um, high level overview of the basics of dance and learning about multiple dance techniques and um, working with styles from various global cultural traditions and the third course, Integrated Visual Art, emphasizes the, connect, uh, the connection between the core subject area content as they study different forms of artistic media and artistic processes. And I'm happy to answer questions on these courses. Brenda. Um, <clears throat> a couple questions. I assume, so the Intro to Dance is our first foray into teaching dance as part of the fine arts. Correct. Track. Um, so I assume there are, um, you're, th you're thinking ahead in terms of adding it at eighth grade and then doing something at East when those students come? Or are you start thinking about doing something at East sooner than two years from now? 
Um, as far as the work I've been doing, we were focusing primarily on this one course with some initial discussions on what the arts uh, house would look like for eighth grade. Um, there's been some conversations about what dance could look like beyond that, but no confirmed plans at this point. Okay, but it's in conversation then? Yes. Yeah, okay. And then I'm just curious, the, the um, curriculum committee uh, that has the intro to dance and the, the th are those the three teachers of these courses? Scott Ronsman, Julie Rabideau, Brenda Mullard? Um, Brenda Mullard is the uh, fine arts coordinator and she also has an arts background, uh, an art background. She teaches art at East currently this year. Um, Scott Ronsman's is the theater teacher for sixth grade. And then um, Julie Rabideau uh, does have dance certification and she did some work with the state as they updated their dance standards. So then um, they're not teaching these classes full time. Do they have other, or do they just come in just for that specific course? I mean, are they part time or do they teach other classes in our district? Well, ju yeah, just to clarify, um, w w uh, Dr. Kahn and I don't have clarification on whether any of those three would be the ones actually teaching oh, those courses. Okay. I apologize. They, they help with the curriculum the development yes. piece. Got you know, it's it. kind of like chicken or the egg. You got to start with the curriculum right. and then, right. so. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. But they're ten they, so the teachers tend to be teachers that also have other teaching assignments in our district. They may travel to Washington and or else they're in Washington. They teach other things. Is that usually how this plays out? Or these aren't, these don't become part-time teachers teaching these single uh, two or three classes. Do you, do you see what I'm asking? I, I believe okay. I know what you're asking and I don't, we don't have the answer okay. between, between us tonight. We would have to get that information for you. Okay, yeah, I'd be interested in just yes. knowing that. Once you know, I mean, you may right. not know for another month or two, so. Any other question? I would like to, what opportunity, if any, will um, next year's seventh graders who are not in the sixth grade arts house have to join the arts program in seventh grade? Is that an option? So the ones that aren't currently in the Arts House? Right. Um, I have to defer to Washington as far as their application process for the Arts House okay. to see what those opportunities would be. Right. As, as spots are available, we, we uh, do give consideration to people who want to enroll over. And I would say that the arts, the support of the arts in general through the fine arts uh, work that we're doing at Washington enhances not only the students who are participating in the arts through that program, but also the arts offerings uh, throughout the school just with the additional resources, the, the mm -hmm. facilities, the funding that we have to make sure that art is, uh, the arts are a vital part of, of what, are, what we're offering there, which we all know is a great engager of our students. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions, comments? We'll move that forward. Thank you. Uh, now the West High School International Baccalaureate Health sure. Resources. As you may know, the, uh, the curriculum for the district's overall current sixth grade and high school health and wellness courses um, were updated and approved back in 2016 according to our curriculum, our current curriculum templates and in accordance with updated standards and legal expectations from the state of Wisconsin. Um, in 2017, the Teaching and Learning Department proceeded to reconvene um, an ad hoc Human Growth and Development Advisory Committee to provide feedback and input on the Human Growth and Development Units that are part of that um, and associated with the state law. As a result of their input and advising, curriculum teams then were again convened to revise the units and update the instructional resources in accordance with the state requirement pertaining to Human Growth and Development instruction. Since that time, um, the district has also navigated updated laws pertaining to the requirement to provide life-saving skills instruction, including CPR, um, CCR, and the use of AEDs. Um, while this was all happening, West High School was in the process of obtaining certification as an MYP authorized school. And achieving authorization requires a more in-depth and sustained learning experience in various subject areas. So as such, Dr. Khan will now speak about a proposed health and wellness course um, that is exclusive to the West High uh, Middle Years program for two years from now, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So the trends in health and wellness course that we're proposing for West High School will allow them to meet their concurrency of learning requirements um, that is part of the IB Middle Years program. And so in that, students need to have a single year of concurrency in, in this subject area in health and FIAD. Um, 
and the students will be completing that uh, based on West decision in 10th grade. The current high school health and wellness course is taken by students at Franklin Middle School in 8th grade, so an additional course will be needed to meet the MYP requirements. The proposed trends in health and wellness course builds off of what students learned in the uh, health and wellness course in 8th grade, giving them opportunities to study current health trends in greater depth and examine health topics and issues in the community. Over the 1920 school year, the West Physical Education Department will be devel developing their units and assessments that will meet the IB MYP expectations. And I'm happy to answer questions about these courses or this course. Christina. Um, Eric, and I know we, we're meeting in a couple weeks, so we can get into more of the details later. Uh, curious if you've ever run our health education curriculum through the HECAT tool through the CDC? It's the health education curriculum analysis tool. I'm just curious. Yeah, I'm familiar with the that. tool, and it, I started working with the health four years ago. I can't remember one way or the other okay. how in depth we use that tool. Yeah, we can talk more about mm -hmm. it too. Because um, I am curious um, with the health education curriculum, also um, how it, how we're ensuring that there is alignment, as you were saying, with eight, eighth grade, but that it's forward thinking and meeting the needs of our diverse mm -hmm. students. So can you talk a little bit about how that plays into that curriculum piece because it's about relationship building and those social emotional pieces? Just one point of clarification. Are you referring, um, Ms. Shelton, to uh, the course being proposed tonight or the, the pre-existing health curriculum overall with the question? Well, I'm asking just in general if you've ever okay. used that tool. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious. Okay. Um, and to the question about relationships, that was one piece of feedback that came from the Community Advisory Committee on Human Growth and Development two years ago. So when we updated those units, we were very intentional as we developed the updated resources and um, uh, recommendations for teacher use of instructional resources that the resources being used are reflective of the, the diverse community that we live in. Awesome. And can, do you know the publisher off the top of your head of this? Um, there is no publisher. We don't use a specific adopted resource. Okay. Instead, um, either we've located resources that meet criteria for different topics or teachers are given an overarching framework of expectations of resources that they can then choose to meet individual schools. Okay, so needs. there's no book. Correct. <coughs> okay. Interesting. All right. Thank you. Any other questions about the trends in health and wellness course that we're discussing? Go ahead. Rather. I have a couple questions. Um, on the proposed change or curriculum, the Joint Committee on National Health Standards, 1995 and 2007, seems kind of dated. Is there anything that's more current that is out there? Under the resources. Under the resources, bottom of page six, it just seems it's a you know 20 years ago plus years ago. I was just wondering if there was something. Correct. You know, why you focused on that versus if there's anything that's more current. These are the, so the National Health Standards, the, the most recent uh, edition is 2007 and the most recent edition of the State Health Standards are 2011. And um, the reason we referenced the 95 is there's some elements uh, language-wise that we drew from in some of our um, uh, overarching expectations and uh, disciplinary characteristics, but mm -hmm. the standards themselves are the 2011 Wisconsin Model Academic Standards. And that's the most current. Correct. Wow. As an aside, this is one challenge that we have with seeking uh, a published vendor's resource for modern course or courses that change rapidly. If we would have recommended a textbook three years ago, they wouldn't have included the topic of vaping, for instance. Mm -hmm. And yet, that is a major situation in America and teens, right? And so, um, we have concerns about a static textbook in health and other topics. Um, so we're, we're we're cognizant of knowing that mm -hmm. there needs to be some other method by which we ensure we have accurate, up-to-date um, information that is carefully vetted. And it's a difficult... It's a good point and yeah. a really important point. Sure. Yeah. But, okay, but is the state, do you know if the state's actually actively working to update their standards, their, you know, the DPI 2011 standards? Do you know if there's anything happening at the state level? Okay. So I doubt they're going to address it anytime soon. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I have one more question. What is, what is the normal cycle for standards updates from the state? 15, 20 years? Yeah. Most. I know that's, geez, it's, it's been long. They've created changes three separate times in the past 
12 years related to things that are expected in health, mm -hmm. which is why I referenced in my introduction the piece around CPR and AED. And uh, you know, back in 2006 or 2005, it was about shaken baby, baby syndrome. Um, the governor's law changed in 2012 about human growth and development. So even though they haven't updated the standards, they have kept creating, um, frankly, unfunded mandates that districts are asked to respond to and update and keep up with relative to, to more current things. So. I do. So under so page five, under topics at a glance, under wellness skills review, there is line items uh, noted as values. What is that related to? Um, in this case, it's a carryover from what's currently in the health class, where students are asked to um, examine their their own values. It's not an uh, uh, an issue of uh, value promotion. It's more about reflection on uh, individual values. And what kind of questions are asked to reflect on their values? I'd have to go back to the resources and mm -hmm. review what's in there. Is there any way that you would be able to pro provide that for us before we vote on this? Yeah, the uh, curricular material is available. Mm -hmm. If it's okay with you, I'm just throwing this out there. Since we're going to be talking next week, I think it's on the 11th. If you wanted to come with that, we'd have to post it. But well, I think we'd have to post it. If we were to meet and talk about you'd, you'd probably be covering that then um i'd like to jump in and just clarify the difference between the existing health curriculum and courses that have been previously approved and existing resources versus what west needs to do for its myp piece mm -hmm. um you'll notice in some in part a portion of the request is the fact that um the west teachers need to get together and develop their units based on the training they will attend mm -hmm. this is really about the curriculum framework and, and approval to move forward with their planning and training as was referenced earlier uh, by i apologize my as you're getting on ms barbian yep. Yes. Thank you. Um, in regards to the training that the staff will undergo so that they can come back and they can flesh out the exact details re related to this particular course. Um, so there are some things we won't be able to answer relative to the guts and the actual instruction associated with it. I apologize mm -hmm. for that. But we would be glad to come back after that work is done and we could uh, either through email or other measure or, or in person mm -hmm. share, share some of those resources. Andrew. <coughs> uh, so I know I know many kids take um, health in eighth grade or is it is it the norm or standard practice that kids take health in eighth grade or is that um, it, it depends on the school so the state law allows health to be taken for high school credit in eighth grade mm -hmm. because of the needs of the MYP program initially when Franklin was going through this they opted to use the high school health class to meet their concurrency of learning requirements in eighth grade. So as West has expanded their MYP for ninth and 10th grade, they've needed an additional class because all students take it at Franklin in eighth grade. The numbers in other middle schools differ and I would have to look, the, uh, see what the percentage is. So this is are. just for, for West? This is just for West, correct. Okay, so then students won't take health in Franklin in eighth grade? They still will because that's still needed to meet the concurrency of learning in middle school. Uh -huh. This course will meet the concurrency of learning requirements for high school. Okay, so so who <coughs> will who will take this at West? Um, all 10th graders. All 10th graders. So all 10th graders will have this one year course? It'll be, it's a, this is a semester course. They will also take personal fitness as the phi ed semester to meet the full year requirement. Okay, so 10th graders, all 10th graders at West will take a one semester IB health course? Correct. No, but that it'll, but it'll be a, it will be health slash PE for a semester or will it be a full year of half and half sure it's, it's a full year of half and half so we currently have a FIAD class personal fitness that will be meet the PE semester requirement we need to add an additional health course to meet the, the high school health requirement for the sophomores but is it going to be factions of both classes for the entire year or are you going to do one semester health one semester FIAD the intention is to be one semester health one semester of FIAD and that okay, way so that from a scheduling perspective right. students can uh, that, meet that, it and, uh, it's asking. more flexible for scheduling yeah okay so the difference the difference between going to um, going to West as a 10th grader and going to Southwest as a 10th grader is if I'm a 10th grader at West 
I have to take a semester of Phi Ed and I have to take a semester of IB Health, even though I took health in eighth grade. At Southwest, I'll have to take a semester of Phi Ed and I won't have to take the semester of health. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. So then West sophomores will have one half less elective credit. Yes. Opportunity. Yes. Whether whether they're intending to continue on into IB program or further coursework or not. Correct. Okay. I thought it was a requirement for high school for every high school student to take a course of health. No. A lot of them take it in eighth grade, though. I understand that. What I'm saying though is eighth grade. I I, I I'm thinking high school. So eighth grade, not tenth grade. It's not required. In high school. No, it is not. Although I think there's a lot of not I think there's a lot of research that would suggest that such an expectation would be beneficial for many communities. Mm -hmm. And uh, as this curriculum cycle comes around, mm -hmm. and the next time the ad hoc advisory committee comes together, it wouldn't shock me if that becomes that a recommendation. Yeah. Yeah, okay. No, thanks for that clarification. I had it wrong. I appreciate that. Thank you. Can I just ask the certification for CPR and AED? So the staff there will be certified to teach both of these. Do we have staff in other schools or do we have staff who are trained in it or trained to, are trained trainers in this or it, what? In our FIA department, we currently have um, two teachers at Southwest as part of lifeguarding who are CPR instructors. Okay. Um, over the summer before we start the new officiating and co coaching class, which also has the CPR requirement, we'll be certif uh, certifying three teachers as CPR instructors at, well, two, two additional ones, one at um, East and one at Preble, and then West will need that certification as well for 2020. Do we have AEDs in every building? Uh, the training materials, we have ones that meet the the health requirement by law, but we'll need to purchase additional. Do we have the de we have the yes. devices? In yes, every we do. In okay. in all yes. And do we have someone in every building with these devices who knows how to use them? Yes. Okay. 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 Jamie. With the, the eighth grade health course and then continuing on to take the IB health course, is so is the IB health course, is it basically an, an extension of deeper knowledge of health or is it kind of a, an overview of what we've already learned in eighth grade? That's a, that's a good question. It's actually, a, it goes deeper. So it's okay. it, deeper topics uh, and more current mm -hmm. uh, trends, but also looking at more at the community impacts and community resources related okay. to these health topics. So will students still be required to take it in eighth grade or could they just take the course in 10th grade? Uh, Franklin students would still need to take it in eighth okay. grade because that's a requirement for their middle MRP? years program. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much, we'll move that forward. Thank you, I apologize. One extra thing I'd like to add is I would defer to Mr. Stangle and the facilities team to be able to clarify the details pertaining to the location and training for AED devices around our, our building from a facility standpoint. We were speaking as it pertains to the health and PE instruction. So. Okay. No. And I did get verbal cue from from uh, Ms. Byer that that, that okay. is something that okay. is covered, but yeah, it's it is it's it's uh, a related tangent, okay. but not something that they're responsible for. No, so not a problem. But the the, the discussion begged the question, yeah. and I appreciate much appreciated you offering the information. All right, thank, thank you. And now we have thank mathematics, you. advanced placement, computer science. And Eric is fleeing. Okay. Sure. <laughs> and we have several courses that we're going to be sharing related to mathematics and uh, elective choice. And okay. so that is something that we would like to share a little bit more on with Cindy Cantwell. And again, Mr. Freeze. Yep, finally this evening from Teaching and Learning, Cindy's here, uh, Cindy Cantwell is here to present numerous uh, elective course curriculum revisions and course proposals for you to consider. Um, the, uh, I'm speaking <laughs> broadly about the, the number that you will, you will be here. I, I realize that she will have them each introduced individually, but she'll be introducing them collectively because they're kind of part of a, the whole kit and caboodle related to our upper level high school electives that remained um, in need of being updated over the past seven years. These courses brought forward tonight do reflect a diverse range of college readiness options for our students at the high school level and we believe reflect our district's continued commitment to helping all students graduate mathematically proficient and prepared for the next level of their education. Cindy, take it away. All right. Thank you. Uh, during this 2018-19 school year teams of high school math teachers collaborated on the following high school math elective course documents. 
the work was important and valuable, and we really appreciated the hard work and deep thinking that those teacher teams did. Trigonometry and math modeling documents were updated um, to reflect the Wisconsin State Math Standards. Um, AP Computer Science A was updated to reflect the new Wisconsin Computer Science Standards as well as the AP Standards. And lastly, two du dual credit math course documents were written to reflect the changes to NWTC's math offerings. These new courses are College Technical Math 1A and Mathematical Reasoning. Those two courses replace college mathematics and math with business applications. And we recognize that initially you're speaking to us tonight or you may have questions pertaining to the Advanced Placement Computer Science A course. So we will head back we'll to that original. in order, but you've sure. spoken to them all. So we will, any questions or comments about uh, Advanced Placement Computer Science? Hearing none, we'll move that forward. Then we have College Technical Math 1A. Nothing, we'll move that forward. Mathematical modeling. Anything? No, we'll move that forward. We're on a roll. Mathematical reasoning. No. Trigonometry. Thank you for that. Oh, go ahead, Brenda. <laughs> that did it. Trigonometry. <laughs> um, is trigonometry a, a new <coughs> course, or we've had it for a while? And it's intended to be taken and s depending on where you think you're going in life mm -hmm. instead of pre-calc, is that correct? It, it can be taken in addition to pre-calc, but yes, as a fourth year elective. Okay, generally. all right. And it's not, I always thought trigonometry was kind of required if you're a math person, and I thought it was already covered in um, pre-calc and, and algebra two to some degree. It is, but this goes more in depth and it's a semester course that concentrates just, just completely on trig, on trig okay. and all the applications. Okay, thanks. Andrew. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, am I just dating myself that algebra two is usually often just called algebra two trig? Right. So we, some, some school districts just have Algebra 2 and don't include Trig and have that maybe as a separate semester. So they might have Algebra 2 and then a semester of Trig. Um, we combine Algebra 2 and Trigonometry together in the okay, one Okay, so this would be, a, this would be so, so students <laughs> would take Algebra two. Algebra 2 prior to taking this mm -hmm. deeper Trig course? Correct. So who would who would be likely to who would be likely to take this course or who would this course be marketed towards if presumably you've you've probably got a pretty full thing of four years of math if you're going towards a, a STEM occupation or STEM STEM field? Um, the the course would be more. Um, I would think for engineering students, but yet it, as, as you move through pre-calculus and into calculus, that's also an option. I think students who find um, the trigonometry they've done in Algebra 2 um, engaging and want to learn more about it um, tend to gravitate toward this semester-long course. Instead of what? Like what else? Um, would and, give? and also maybe depending on schedule flexibility. So it's a one semester course. Uh -huh. So they might not take pre-calculus or they might not take calculus. They might take ma like math modeling one semester and trigonometry one semester or maybe just trigonometry. If they want to get that extra math class in before graduation, um, but maybe a full year course isn't going to be fitting into their schedule. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Will all of these classes be offered at all of the schools, all of the high schools? Offered but may not run. Um, in, in some cases, some have a history uh, of quite popularity due to a staff member who's got a lot of background and history in running the course. I think the math modeling course is often run at exclusively at Preble, typically. Um, so. 
it, it, it may vary, but we updated the, the course documents and we'll keep working with the math teachers around interest and it'll be available in the course book and we'll have to base it on that. And I share the, the uh, not concern, but the interest in how people identify as needing trigonometry because clearly we're not there. <laughs> but I'm assuming that there are students who sure. know and exactly I, I, that this is where they need to be. Uh, make sure that we're working with our, right. our guidance counselors and with our math teachers so that mm -hmm. they have a full understanding of how how this fits and they can they can think about that as they're Good. communicating with various students I also think that uh, we talked before about the Chinese courses and the blended learning opportunities and the technology piece right. you know if we have a handful of students at one once a couple of different schools it might be a good opportunity for for others to do you know, blended <coughs> learning opportunity as mm -hmm. well good thank you Michelle just as a follow-up, as our students continue to progress with advanced AVMR and with more rigorous bridges, we will see many, many more students engaging at higher and higher levels. We can anticipate that. We're planning on that. And I think it's a, a very, very realistic um, opportunity to look forward to. Yes, I, I want to thank uh, Mr. Fries and especially Cindy Cantwell for the work that's been done around math. Over the course of the past year, there have been a number of things that we're moving forward on uh, in addition to these these topics, enhancing our, our uh, ability for our teachers to serve all students. And I really appreciate the work that both of them are doing, as well as the work of Dr. Khan, who was here presenting before. Thank, yes. thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Good night. All right. And our final discussion item is American Institutes for Research proposal. And I'd like... Uh, Dr. Judy Wiegand to join me here for our presentation as Executive Director of our Secondary Schools. As Dr. Wiegand comes up to the table, I know that um, this proposal is something that um, warrants good discussion, and I know that the science of turnaround is not something that um, is, is always um, shared and well understood. So this whole comprehensive school reform turnaround discussion, I think, is really important for us as a district to have this conversation. And so um, I wanted to share that uh, the success, of course, as you know, of all of our schools is central to the mission of the Green Bay Area Public School District. And as you know, the district entered into a partnership with the American Institutes for Research in the 2018-19 uh, school year to promote accelerated turnaround for Washington Middle School. And we are seeking to uh, continue with this important support for the children of Washington. It's an active cursor. There we go. So why are we here? We're here tonight to provide the board with our proposal to continue this accelerated turnaround for Washington Middle School through our partnership with the American Institutes for Research. We want to share a bit about how uh, preliminary information is showing very positive results, both academic and behavioral results. And we also plan to answer and or <laughs> gather any questions uh, that you may have that will assist you in your decision making regarding approval of this contract. Taking a look at some of our behavioral results, uh, you can see here a chart with our out-of-school suspensions with a clear and significant decrease of out-of-school suspensions. So although we're holding our students to the same high standards, we've reduced out-of-school suspension by over 50% from this year to that last, last year to this year, looking at data through June 3rd. This also represents when you look at the number of, of students spending less time in out-of-school suspension, a significant increase of classroom time, classroom instruction, nearly 3,000 additional student hours of time where students are spent in learning. Taking a look at our uh, academic results, we are uh, still, of course, waiting for our Wisconsin Forward exam results. and. We're, we're uh, in the process of closing out the school year, so there's additional information that we want to look at regarding uh, performance of our students, including the forward exam results, which we won't receive for quite some time yet. But we're seeing very positive preliminary academic results in literacy and math. 
uh, which were two of the areas that were a strong focus of our, our work. Uh, looking at the STAR NCE results, and you're pretty familiar with STAR NCE from, from prior uh, experience, we are seeing uh, that all measured cohorts made growth in their STAR NCE areas. So as a whole, the students made significant progress. And then when you broke it down into the individual groups, looking at uh, various student populations, each of those uh, cohorts in the different grade levels showed growth in reading and math uh, that was significant. And we also showed greater than average growth seen in many of our minority student cohorts. So we're really seeing a closing of the gap. We're also looking forward to the end of year results and being able to look at those results uh, for behavior and academics as the year comes to a close and we have more additional information. So taking a look at those STAR NC results, uh, again, you can see significant percentile change and realizing that a few points on this uh, is really, really significant. Taking a look at, for instance, the seventh grade score is going from NCE of 23 to 30. That's showing that compared to the fall, their winter scores, there was a massive shift of the students in their math abilities. And you can see that in each of those uh, grade level areas, in each of those, those areas for um, reading and math, there was significant increase. Thinking about district implications, what does this mean for us uh, as, as a group overall, uh, and, and uh, really Dr. Wiegand has, has played a large role with working with all of our schools, and we, we all of course are, are uh, working on things related to, to our, our secondary and elementary schools, but there's been a strong tie to what we are doing with AIR and how it's advancing our work uh, throughout the district. School turnaround, is, as Dr. Uh, Langenfeld said, it, it is truly a science. And it's a new science that's being recognized by the federal government. And it's something that we have focused on because turning around a school in a challenging situation is something that takes time and deep levels of expertise. We have a variety of people here who are very strong in their individual leadership and their skill area. But the work of turnaround science has to do with making sure those efforts are strongly coordinated. And uh, basically what it also allows us to do is take people who are uh, proven operators within the system and being able to take those skills and expand them uh, to, to additional other schools. Some ways that we've done that in our district this year are really a deepening understanding of the systemic needs of our turnaround practices in hiring and leadership coaching processes and also in better use of student data for continuous improvement. I would love to say that we are at vision state for each of these areas but it's something that, that we are learning about and continuing to prove, improve on as we move forward. Um, one area that we focused on is uh, making sure that we're building systems and structures that allow for sharing of lesson plans and ideas throughout uh, the, the uh, teaching ranks. We, our collaborative learning teams work together with facilitation and based on observation that's being done through the work of AIR with the coaches. So they're able to work with our teams so that their instruction is improved. Overall, we're seeing that the universal level of instruction is being raised significantly at Washington, particularly in reading and math. And again, another area that we're focusing on is the data piece. And we're really using, as, as you've seen us come forward with our system of continuous improvement for the district as a whole, really focusing on accountability. How do we make sure that through line of accountability goes from the classroom teacher through the principal, through a supervisor of school, through to the district, and then to, to the board, as well as supportively, how is the board supporting district office who supports the principal, who supports the teachers so that they can best support the students. So that system of continuous improvement is really uh, what we have uh, been focusing on, uh, working on. I'm not sure if there's anything else that you'd add at this time, Dr. No, Wiegand. Um, just to make sure that we're all clear on and using the same vocabulary. So um, when I talk about turnaround schools, um, I'm going to use a definition that comes from the Wallace Foundation. Talk about turnaround as a dramatic and comprehensive intervention in a low performing school that produces significant gains <laughs> achievement within two years and readies the school 
the longer process of transformation to a high performance organization. So I just want to make sure that we're all using the same vocabulary and have the same understanding when we talk about Washington as a turnaround school. And sometimes that's difficult to admit that one of our schools has gotten to that point where it is a low, pretty significant low performing school and the work that has to be done. Um, and also that when you take a look at the work around um, turnaround schools, that again, looking at some of the research on this, that pr practitioners that have taken this on, and I'll have to testify that, to that myself this year, um, consistently say they were unprepared for the severity of the student needs and the school issues that have to be addressed. And I will say that has been my experience this year and working very closely um, with the building administration and staff at Washington Middle School as to once you start peeling off all those layers, there's a lot of work to be done. I also know that you are facing some challenging questions from the community regarding fiscal resources and continuing this work with AIR. That's not an easy decision. So I'm here at least to share about my experience to date um, in working with AIR in Washington. Mm -hmm. I would also say that each of us, uh, from the superintendent through uh, work, working with our principal, uh, Ms. Olson, each of us has had experience in, in running successful schools and in turning around schools. The difference that we're looking for here is the difference of accelerated turnaround. Uh, it, it generally takes, uh, the research shows, takes uh, five to seven years for a school to really have turnaround under a normal process. Mm -hmm. But the work that we're doing because of the need that we saw at Washington and the need that the community saw as far as what we wanted to offer our students, we wanted to make sure that we were accelerating that work so that the change could come. There wasn't enough time for us to wait five years of kids to go through. We wanted to make sure that that change happened quickly and was well supported. I would also say that the difference is in working with AIR thinking about it from a, a medical perspective, um, to a degree, administrators mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. ourselves are general practitioners who might be skilled in what we do as a general practitioner, but there's also a time when, when a patient has uh, particular uh, needs that we want to make sure are, are looked at and examined and, and that we have feedback from a deeper level of expertise and a deeper level of resource. So for example, you might send out for a specialist or you might have somebody report to the Mayo Clinic, for example, so that we can have deeper understanding of where the issues are. That doesn't mean that we don't learn from that and use that experience and expand it into the other schools or that we don't have the capacity to serve uh, in, in mm -hmm. performing, uh, in helping s schools turn around. It means that we know when the issue is very complex, mm -hmm. it's important for us to have the wisdom to seek an outside resource to, to give mm -hmm. us that deeper level of insight. Jamie had a question early on. She had her hand up. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Sure. Okay. So, uh, we. Go ahead. Katie's, Katie's, no, I'm not the one who pre this. It's Katie's meeting. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Did someone have a question? Jamie had raised her hand. Mm -hmm. Don't hold back. Okay. Are you ready to continue? Yes. Okay. Right. So, uh, as we note in the contract, there are a number of different uh, pieces that we're focusing on for expected results, higher expectations for uh, and results for all students, improved culture and climate, more effective teachers and leaders, improved parent and community engagement, as well as coherent, disciplined approach for, for teaching and learning. So those, again, are, are what we will be delivering on through our partnership with AIR. And I know that uh, Dr. Wiegand, in working with Ms. Olson, uh, was also soliciting some, some feedback from some of the teachers. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if there were anything mm -hmm. uh, that you'd like to add related to some comments from teachers as far as how did they feel about this, this partnership? And this isn't meant to be a full, no, uh, all-inclusive perspective, but these were things that, that some of the teachers had made regarding comments as far as how AIR had been a support to them? Yeah, very anecdotal, certainly, coming from some of the teachers about being hesitant at first to have the consultants come into their classroom. Uh, but when they finally did, they wished they would have had them come in sooner. 
um, veteran teacher um, finding the partnership invaluable that the classroom support um, with the consultants when they're on site is exactly what um, was needed and again even their virtual participation in the collaborative learning teams and helping to confirm and guide the work that they're doing um, again just very anecdotal and look forward to being able to come back and have a full report um, to the board those are just some very short comments we will have a full report for 1819. Um, whenever. I'm assuming mm -hmm. it will be in July, mm -hmm. once the year has come to a scheduled. close. Mm -hmm. Right now, the schools, as you know, all of our schools are abuzz with graduation. We had uh, multiple graduations that many of you participated in, and we were uh, closing down the school year. It also gives us a time to uh, take stock, to reflect, to continue thinking about that that cycle of, of continuous improvement from, mm -hmm. from the annual. Uh, angle and as we as we digest that that information through the month of June we would be then able to, to share July. in July okay. Follow up. so do you um, do you would you call this a report at this point to get us to where we need to make the decision for 1920 I would I would say that this is preliminary information and I'll, I'll share a little bit uh, more about what our request is and then it also uh, what, what's our rationale for why we're proposing at this time? Mm -hmm. Another piece to consider is that uh, looking at the Wallace Foundation documents and other documents on turnaround, the infrastructure for turnaround is not sufficient to meet the needs of all the schools in the country. There's a high demand and there aren't a lot of, uh, a lot of people that are able to yet provide this service. So when we're working with an organization, we have to make a decision whether or not we're going to continue with them because they're in high demand from another of other, a number of other districts who would be very glad to have their services. So we want to make sure that we're able to make that decision from an informed standpoint that we've had uh, cyclical data coming forward, and then this is meant as, as uh, a bit of a summary. But I think that, uh, I think that when we, we share our board request, we're requesting that the Board of Education continue to uh, vital support for Washington Middle School by approving the American Institutes for Research as the lead partner for the 2019-20 school year. And last year, as was noted, we contracted for uh, $394,000, which was substantial. That first year is meant as a foundational year. There's additional work that's done uh, with, with establishing the relationship, with the needs analysis, even though that's something that will be go ongoing. That first year does require a deeper investment. Uh, but the contract for the 1920 school year is a cost of $286,000. This is a significant uh, investment of taxpayer money, but it does represent a reduction of $108,000 or uh, just under 30% reduction. And that was part of something that we, when we talked about it in last year when we brought it forward, it's meant as a gradual stepping down, a gradual release, so that there's heavy support in the first year, less support the next year, and then it would diminish, diminish after that. Um, so that's, that's what we're requesting. And then, really thinking, what is our rationale for continued support? Why are we asking this? And we feel, we strongly feel, that Washington students, families, and staff deserve accelerated turnaround support. There was strong demand from community that we get do everything possible to make sure that we're supporting the students of Washington. We also, as we noted, we are seeing uh, preliminary improved academic and behavioral data that is significant. A reduction of out-of-school suspensions by more than half. All cohorts at all grade levels showing growth in math and reading. Those are, those are impressive numbers even if they're preliminary numbers. As well as uh, continued follow through on initial turnaround investment is fiscally responsible. If we think about the work that is done uh, for that first year, that's the foundational year when the treatment, back to that mental model, that, or that, the medical model, that treatment is just starting. And we want to make sure that we're following through with that treatment so that we can achieve mm -hmm. the results that are intended. As we shared as well, that final point, strong support from the board and community are key for, for Washington. When we came forward last year, we addressed the board that, and uh, talked about how this won't work unless we have 
support from the board and support from the community and support through the district office to make sure that, that Washington is well supported. And we're, we're glad that the board has been very careful in, a, in uh, the leadership and governance and fiscal responsibility, but we're also very thankful for the support that you've given us in the work being done at Washington. So that is, is uh, why we're requesting this proposal. We'll take some questions now. Is that okay? Sure. Mm -hmm. Questions, comments? Go ahead. Andrew? Sure. So um, I guess my, you know, my my concern is wanting to make sure that if you know if I'm going to be voting for this amount of money or for for some amount of money, you know what what resources are we getting? And I think it's about the the pace at which we're moving from you know significant air support towards. Um, towards being able to you know, bring everything in-house that we've learned through the air process. So I guess for, for me personally, individually, um, I, didn't, I didn't expect to have probably a request in, at the end of the 18, 19 year of zero dollars for any air services. I didn't expect that in June I would hear we're done. Mm -hmm. And I probably didn't expect to hear um, a cost of two thirds of the first year cost because I, I think I remember some discussion about you know front loading things and a lot of the pieces being <coughs> up front and there may be being some some costs mm -hmm. so I, I was I I do feel a little bit of, of sticker shock here to a, to a point I'm wondering what um, what we're what are we getting exactly how many you know how many expert how many days of expert time is included in, in this? Because I, I think it was a, a reasonable point that Mr. Dinney made that, that you could hire more than one high level full time professional for that. So mm -hmm. that's a valid, I think it's a valid mm -hmm. question. Sure. Mm -hmm. So asking about the del deliverables in the uh, document that we provided, which is the, uh, the AIR proposal on uh, page one. It uh, lists the three proposed deliverables in the areas of school leadership, professional development, and coaching, which would be 12 days of on-site coaching for the principal, as well as 12 hours of virtual coaching, and uh, a number of other services under that area of, of uh, school leadership, professional coaching. Under the instructional coaching and support, there were 34 days of on-site support for mathematics that we'd be providing, as well as 34 days for English language arts, and 31 hours of uh, on-site or uh, virtual coaching. We'd also be looking at a tracking tool, as well as uh, the, the uh, reality, reality checks that we'd be providing for our, our group as well. I would say as well, an important piece that surfaced this year is when leadership recognized some of the additional needs it really did give us indication of how we could improve our system as a whole. We're not there yet in completing that work, but it really was able to shine a light on some important areas for us. An example of which would be um, our pacing. Thinking about our pacing for particular courses is not fully aligned with where the uh, Wisconsin Forward exam falls. So there are certain topics, for instance, that aren't necessarily covered before that exam that we want to make sure that we're giving support to our students and, and, and preparing them well for that exam so that they can demonstrate their learning as well as possible. So that was an area that came through the instructional coaching piece. And then uh, as far as additional work, there, there was additional work being done with uh, continuous improvement and coherence. It's really tapping into the, what are considered to be the best research minds related to the areas of, of supporting schools through the curriculum, through the leadership, and through turnaround as a science itself. So it's, it, is, it, isn't expensive, or it isn't inexpensive. Uh, when we think about medical services, when, when we do have a loved one that we need to have a go to Mayo, for example, there's, there's a significant cost involved. And if, if it was true cost, uh, not just that covered by insurance, we would be blown away by sticker shock as well. What we're doing with our AIR work is having impact on not just the Washington Middle School, not just our secondary schools, 
but I think as well when we have our board retreat, you'll see how it's infused into the uh, guide to continuous improvement and that through line accountability work we want for the entire district because it's about, it's about um, being warmly demanding. It's about having expectations and holding people to those expectations in a supportive way and helping the system move forward. So it is, uh, there is a scope of work that's described in great detail uh, throughout the proposal, but those, those first few pages really outline what exactly it looks like from number of hours. <coughs> Um, looking under deliverables, I'm particularly interested in improved parent and community engagement. Can you, uh, is it possible to look back at the last year and just kind of give me, give us, I should say, an idea of what progress you feel like we've made in that department? Mm -hmm. I think that. Because um, I know that's particularly. Yeah. Challenging. I, th I think that there, are, there's always more work that can be done. I think that mm -hmm. uh, transparency and voice, especially for underserved, underrepresented students, is really important to us professionally and, and personally. It's something, a value that we hold uh, in, in very high regard. And I would say that, that that is one of the things that drew us to Cindy as a principal and also in partnering with AIR, something that was really important for us as well. Uh, the, the type of community events that we've, we've had at Washington, the uh, positivity and the air of positivity, I think mm -hmm. has, it's been a change in the way that Washington is regarded. I think you've seen uh, several, I mean a high number of, of positive news pieces uh, throughout the, uh, the, the, the past year related to different events that we've had at Washington, different promotion, inclusion of family. But is there more we can do? Is there more we should do? Yes. Oh, can I also add that part of the work um, that I know Cindy and her team did with the AIR, AIR lead person as well as the coaches is when we were doing the STAR assessment and the decision <coughs> was made to share that information, mail it to parents and so forth, which hadn't been done in the past. But then also to have that conversation with that parent and the student about your scores and what does that look like? And for some, it was very good news. For others, it was pretty disturbing to say, well, what do you mean my child's in seventh or eighth grade, but if their performance is here? Um, and so that was part of that coaching piece as well from AIR with Cindy and her team as to, as we continue to dig in here um, and take a look at student performance, being able to have those conversations, what does that look like then with a parent and a student? So that's just one example of the parent engagement piece yeah. and community Thank engagement. You. Thank you. Okay. Well, just a follow-up anecdotally, there were two different reports to me that after the, and these are these are important because they start to change a culture climate. Um, I, last week they had their advancement via individual determination celebration, and it was very well attended by families representing many backgrounds and, and diversity from what I understand and very good attendance from our parents, which is very important. The other piece that was shared with me came from um, the fine arts when they did their, their play mm -hmm. and they brought a lot of families in and it was reported to me by, by one of the theater folks that people stayed around. In other words, families felt welcome and stayed after the performance which isn't always the case. They said it's never happened before. Mm -hmm. So families stayed and spent time with one another. So there's, there's a slow transition into what's happening. Mm -hmm. It could be the fine arts. I'm not attributing that, but I know that families mm -hmm. are more engaged from what I'm seeing and knowing. Um, the first one is, and I wasn't here at the last meeting, so I apologize. Is there a reason why the April monthly report was marked confidential with the AIR? It actually, it actually is not confidential. Okay. It's a public document. It's a public document. Okay. Yeah. But I, I just was wondering. It was in a, the, another document that was marked yep. confidential that's not confidential. Okay. okay. So, so I mean, it can be shared yeah, with the absolutely. community. Sure. In fact, I have he copies here, copies. and I can okay. uh, put out okay. extra copies for, for people that are, are interested, as yeah, well as we can consider how it might be posted through Neptune. But it was it was was there was no intent of having it be a confidential piece. I'll share that with the board, and then I'll put... Uh, 
the additional copy. It's almost like you set me up for that question. I didn't. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, that's what I'm saying. But I'm glad you asked. Yes. Um, I think she's oh, is he walking around. Um, I'll wait until he gets back. So I think one of the things that I'm struggling with, and I, in my current job, I oversee a, a grant program that um, funds a half a million dollars to school funding to schools around the country. And we get our money from many different sources, like many nonprofits. We scrimp and we beg many times to have that money, to get that money in. And those, that money requires robust, detailed reports that tell us exactly what we're going to do at the beginning, that indicate yeah, that, mm -hmm. right? And then say at the end, what, what clearly was accomplished? Sure. Mm -hmm. And I loved your question, Laura, about engagement, because that's always where I go to, like, what's the engagement piece? And while I think your answer was lovely, it didn't really tell me anything about what actually happened. Because, as you know, initiatives are great, right? Events are great. And it's, this is not to say that any of the events at Washington aren't wonderful and include parents and that they're smiling kids and great things happening, but that's not what the money is going towards. The money is going towards systemic change that's going to create a school where everybody can thrive. And what I don't see, honestly, from this report is anything that I can turn to the community and say, this year was a success. I just don't have that information. And if I'm missing something, mm -hmm. or if there's something else that I could be provided, like I would love to be able to turn around, but I just, this is this is all pretty fluffy for me, especially in the amount of money that we're being asked of taxpayer and, and money. And as I outlined before, this is not intended to be the end of your report. Right, but, I'm, but I'm being a asked to make a decision based on yes. that. Yep. So I understand that we have to meet in the middle and, and that there's gonna, yes. just let me finish for a second, that there's gonna be a final report in the summer, and I understand that, but for me as an independently elected official, I can't make a decision based on this. I need to see something else. Sure. Um, and even like your commentary about mm -hmm. the teachers, sure. and, you know, mm -hmm. it's lovely. It's anecdotal though. Mm -hmm. But how much can mm -hmm. I weigh my hat sure. on that? Because mm -hmm. the flip side is I've heard mm -hmm. those positive stories, but I've also heard things like, mm -hmm. it's not going well. Mm -hmm. Lash and so I'm not saying that here oh. as evidence sure. of it's terrible. But I would like to see clearer data from surveys and, and so forth. So that's kind of just where I'm sitting right now. Sure. Um, I have other questions, but um, just wanted to sort of share that feeling where I am. Can I um, ask a question um, and reply? At the beginning of the school year, I think it was in October, we came to the board with the indicators of success for Washington Middle mm -hmm. School. And I don't know if it was a board vote or not, but I guess for me, that was really important as well as to how we're going to make a decision if we're right. doing the right work. And so I guess I'll want, I bought some feedback on those indicators of success. Mm -hmm. Those were not the right ones for the board, mm -hmm. or if something needs to be changed. That's not for tonight, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. in moving forward, it's really important to have that type of feedback. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, like the April report, I was just, I was looking at it again because I wasn't here, and I think there's great, there's great information in there, but we need to, it, it, it needs to be condensed, and we need to be able to communicate and demonstrate to the community that we, there are clear, mm -hmm results coming mm -hmm. out of this investment. Mm -hmm. yes. The community, do, I, I don't have the capacity to go on a three hour presentation about this deep dive. They wanna see, and I'll actually get, sure. goes to my next point. Um, I know one of the deliverables uh, was um, one year of academic growth. Mm -hmm. So the preliminary academic results slide, I don't know if you can go to that one. Did these results indicate that you're on track to, to reach that goal of one year of academic growth in these areas? Oh, sorry, I clicked sorry, on my computer. I wasn't sorry. clicking. I, it didn't go on my. Because that was on the. Um, yeah. That was on the, the indicators, indicators of April. success. So just so curious, if, right. mm -hmm. is that demonstrating that we're going to meet that goal? Mm -hmm. It's demonstrated that demonstrating that we're on a, a very positive trajectory. I think we really have to see what are the end of your results. Uh, I do believe, though, that the um, when we're looking at the behavioral data, which was one of our strong focuses. Mm -hmm that the significant decrease mm -hmm. in suspensions, mm -hmm. um, basically fewer than half mm -hmm. uh, as compared with the year before, that's a pretty significant mm -hmm. impact on, on uh, climate and culture and behavior. And I think for those of you who have spent time, many of you have spent time in the halls at Washington, there's a different feel at Washington. There's a, there's, uh, 
feel positivity and I think that there's a feel of order for the most part. It's a middle school. There are things that happen in middle schools, but I would say it's, it's very similar to any other middle school I've been part of. But to go back to my question, John, mm -hmm. does this trend that you see here indicate that we are going to, like, can you anticipate from these numbers that by the end of that report in Janu July that we are going to reach that goal or how far off the mark do you anticipate us being? Yeah, I think for myself, I would prefer to do a more um, complete report to the board, and that can be in a Friday sure. update, mm -hmm. um, specific to those indicators of success. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have that data, which we would for the STAR? We certainly won't have our mm -hmm. forward mm -hmm. test results mm -hmm. um, prior to that. We'll certainly have our suspension data and that other piece, but I'd like to do a more yeah. um, complete report. That would be so really helpful. Sure. Would help. And I think, update. and I think too, to go back to the discipline statistics. Yes, yes this is love. This in is great to sure. see out of school suspensions. But again, this is a very small, very small yes. sliver mm -hmm. of what is happening in terms of climate and culture and discipline. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm not saying that this is happening at all, but you know, if we can't see the bigger results, then we're not able to see the full picture. And then how am I truly to know that what is being reported is what's actually, or how that's happening and, and how that's sure. sort of fostering. Mm -hmm. does, does that make sense? It does. So anything further that you yes. could provide would really help sure. for me to be able to make an informed decision. Okay, sure. so I'll certainly do a report that is then framed with those um, indicators. Thank you. Okay, sure. Thank you. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. I know, but he's sorry. Um, yeah, we're blocked here. In the, um, <laughs> it's okay. Um, it's my understanding, if I always had to state to, um, that that the NCE, um, just a quick, uh, it's how I look at NCEs. If someone goes from a 19.4 at fall to a 19.4 at winter, they are on track for a yes. one year yes. one year growth. Correct. Can so you if say they, that again, Brenda? So if, if the idea, if 50 is the, the um, I mean, gold standard, yes. so to speak. It's if you're at a 50 NCE, then you're at the, you're at grade level. If you go, if you have a 50 NCE from sixth grade and in seventh grade you have a 50 NCE, you've grown a year. So if you have a 50 in sixth grade and you get a 60, you've grown, and I don't know what mm -hmm. the numbers are, yeah. but you've grown significantly more than a year. So I look at these numbers saying, okay, in fall it's 19.4, in winter it's 23. Those, that group has grown significantly more than what would be projected as one year's growth. Because the winter number is set for a winter time, time stamp for right. taking that test. And so if the sixth graders were just strictly making one year's growth, it would be 19.4 to 19.4, and they would be making a year's growth. So when you have a higher number, it means they're accelerating their growth. And I think exactly how you just described it is important for our community to understand right, that. Right. Because looking at this you don't isn't understand going what to, those, yeah. Right, right, exactly. Right. Right. You look, and that's why, I mean, NCE mm -hmm. is, is, is really useful in terms of talking, but, it, but you have to understand what the number means. And so, the, so growth and having the same number, it doesn't make, you know, it's not intuitive to most people, that's but right. that's how NCEs work. So just as an example, looking at the reading number up there, uh, sixth grade reading going from 20.7 to 28. If the students had made, as you said, average growth, that number would be a 20.7 as the winter uh, right. NCE average, but it's, it's shot up to 28, uh -huh. which is uh, meaning, and I, this is a, a little bit of a looser interpretation, but it's, it's, it's close to being a full grade level beyond what you would expect. If it were 10 points, that would be a full grade level. So it would mean that, that you've made not only average growth for the time between fall and winter, but that you've moved that cohort, that whole cohort, up nearly an additional grade level. But I think that, the, again, this is preliminary, and it's not, uh, it doesn't, doesn't have all the detail that we need mm -hmm. related to the, mm -hmm. uh, the measures that we set aside for the board in the October reports. Right, and this is just the work session, so we do have time mm -hmm. to yes. gather more information. Sure. I appreciate good that. good feedback. Eric, are you ready now? Yes, mm -hmm. I'm ready. I don't, I don't know if there's a question in here somewhere, but okay. I, this is really hard, especially being new to the board. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I, I've got a lot going on, and maybe if I just say it out loud, some a question will come out. Um, so obviously, investment in Washington Middle School is important. Yes. Uh, we made that, the board made that decision. 
um, agree that we owe the rapid turnaround. Um, I, I want to make sure that we haven't made an investment, but don't go far enough. If uh -huh. we, you know, yes. if we weren't going to do this, so we spent all this money and then we mm -hmm. we didn't finish it and see it all the way through and, mm -hmm. and didn't see out our investment. So that's one thought that's uh -huh. going on in my mind. Um, the other side of it, though, is is thinking about rapid turnaround in the investment. So. The board would be making almost seven hundred thousand dollars over two years in Washington Middle School, and I think about uh, needing to make that investment at Washington. When do we take a look at what other schools need that same investment? And we can talk about the the anecdotal, the the sure. other support that they're getting. But when I look at the hours of coaching for the administrators and for the teachers, um, I, I look at our elementary schools. Could, could we go further up the river? And, and prevent some of this can we can we help build better kids earlier um, you know so that I'm wrestling with that that thought um, you know the two hundred eighty six thousand dollars can we invest that in, in another way again I don't want to bail on AIR if we've, if we've made this investment in, and that's where we need to go and, and I don't have the the benefit of being on the board and, and making that 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 decision with all of the information so um, I just I think about Franklin and, and feedback that I hear from Franklin I think about our elementary schools and the 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 support that they would would like and I bet I could go to any elementary school principal that, that's struggling right now and say hey if I could get you 12 hours or 12 days of on-site coaching if I could get your teachers um, this support would you benefit from that and the answer would be absolutely yes absolutely um, so want to continue to support Washington the, the other thing is that w when does when does this stop I mean if, if this is the secret and all of a sudden we've unlocked this that pr contract with AIR helps to to make all of our kids experience this great success that knowledge tells me we need to find a way to spend this money in all of our schools because all of our kids deserve it not just Washington mm -hmm. so I don't think anywhere in there is a question mm -hmm. uh, but those are all the thoughts that are going on in my head mm -hmm. right now and I don't know how I would be able to make uh, a decision mm -hmm. on sure on this sure. in two weeks sure and I can uh, maybe maybe um, react, to, all react <laughs> to, to some of the things that you said and I, I have very very strong agreement with many of the things you said as well looking at Franklin looking at many of our, our elementaries so very similar needs part of what we're doing in our work with Washington as we're going through a leadership transition at Franklin is making sure that we have structures and supports in place including some of the things that we're doing with our hiring process mm -hmm. yes. so that we're choosing somebody that will be a, a good strong successful leader there I also look at the um, ESSA uh, work that we're doing with our districts which is the state identification and continuous improvement making sure that there are parallels between how we're supporting at Washington the lessons we're learning there making sure that they're spreading into our, our, our other yes. schools mm -hmm. uh, it's it's vital for us too when you see the the uh, guide to continuous improvement that we'll present during the uh, retreat this summer uh, it's vital to us that we have a, a way of doing very similar work in all of our schools it might not be with the same uh, level of specialty expertise that we needed for this situation because we're gaining from that specialty mm -hmm. expertise uh, and able to able to spread that not to say that we won't need some support in other schools but we're making sure that the, the uh, lessons we're learning we're applying uh, to those other other areas and it is upstream Washington is a segment in the river it's a, the elementaries flow into Washington and the Washington students <coughs> flow up to East. The successful graduation of the East students we watched yesterday is a product. It's the, the, uh, the, the, the end of that journey for those students through our K-12 system. But we have to really think about what does the support look like at, at how through our community school and our, our focus there. What does our support look like in each of our schools that, that are moving forward into um, into to Washington very important comments thank you and so maybe also goes to then the work that's being done with AIR at Washington um, how has it changed then the systems and the processes at the district level office in order to make those type of changes and do that type of work at other schools 
be another way of taking a look at it. So what lessons have we learned and how do we, how do you know then as a board member that changes are taking place then at the organizational level? Yeah, I, so, I, I guess I just, I question, what would it look like if we choose to spend these dollars and we, we've got this and we know mm -hmm. that we'll continue to be successful and continue to see metrics, what would it look like if it wasn't there? Sure. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't expect all of a sudden suspensions to go back to 700. No. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, could we so. sustain? Yeah, the yeah. Effort? Do we sustain? Do we take the mm -hmm. lessons that we learned and continue mm -hmm. to apply them without the support of mm -hmm. AIR? Um, you know, do we spend half sure. of that amount of money in, in another way? Um, and can we continue to use those lessons mm -hmm. learned? Sure, sure. That's just what mm -hmm. I'm wrestling with. Jane, good questions. Um, I just have a like minor clarifying question on the preliminary academic results um, slide. The first one uh, you refer to all measured cohorts. Is that referring to all students who took the STAR test, or is there a certain subject pool that was used? Uh, what I was referring to there is uh, all, so we had the general average score, mm -hmm. but then we broke it down into other, uh, other groupings of students. For example, looking at our, our uh, Asian students, looking at our Native American students, looking at our students of mixed race, looking at students mm -hmm. from a variety of grade levels, gender, each of those areas showed growth. Okay. And the re that, that's important to us because all means all to mm -hmm. us. And I, I wouldn't want something that was benefiting one student group that didn't mm -hmm. benefit right. everybody. Mm -hmm. That issue of disproportionality. Okay. Yes. Thank an you. important one. I just want to piggyback off what you said, Eric, too, because I think that, that um, those implications for the investment are crucial. Mm -hmm. we, I, I would love to know more deeply. Again, not a hundred page I would love to know how that has shifted the decisions that you've made at your job sure, sure. how has mm -hmm. that shown up in other schools how is mm -hmm. that information and dissemination of information and leadership shift or whatever you want to describe it how is that already impacting those are the ways that we can demonstrate to our community that the value is not just in Washington but as a district mm -hmm. sure. um, and because it's not possible to do this investment in every school, it would be great if we had money to do that. But it shows that we have to build capacity within our district to be able to do it ourselves. And that was the expectation when we signed on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to Eric initially. And I think that it would be, it would carry over yes. to mm -hmm. other schools. And I'm going to, and I want to learn more about what that looks yes. like. No, I think that's reasonable. I think, I think some of what it exposes, and rightfully so, are the things that aren't working. Uh, and I know that's when we're here promoting something mm -hmm. to say, hey, these are the blemishes that were uncovered. That might not be mm -hmm. the popular thing to do, but it's the right thing to do. One thing we discovered was that our system for really looking at uh, student assessment data and analyzing it and looking at that in teams, it wasn't as robust as we wanted it to be. We already talked a little bit about the, the pacing uh, being an issue. We've also seen that we want to make sure that our, our uh, different teams from our, our, our um, departments within the district office are as responsive as possible. Everybody is uh, doing hard work, trying hard, but sometimes that lack of synergistic effect and, and mm -hmm. thinking about That's things from a customer uh, service, we're su support service for schools, that's something we can always improve on. Mm -hmm. So for me, in, okay. investing in sorry, okay. <laughs> investing in the professional development and, and, and leadership for our staff, making our people who we put in front of our kids mm -hmm. better, will always be a priority. And if if this is what you're saying is the the best use of those dollars in order to make all teachers and all administrators in our district better, then I can I can support that because that is a, a tremendous resource investing in our people. Um, so that our kids can have a better experience. So that's, you know, what mm -hmm. I want to keep in my mind. Mm -hmm. And if this is mm -hmm. what's best, then, then I can support that. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Go okay. So going back to you, I talked about that um, you were concerned about um, investment. And if we go back to last proposal, where we were given testimonials in order to think about this this proposal of the 394 um, all of those schools I, I did actually look into this quite a bit last time and all of the schools that were given to us with testimonials of we use AIR and and by the way it was an average of three years to see 
any change. Um, every one of those schools was grant funded. It was not coming out of the general fund. And I think that's important to note. Um, when we're talking about tight budgets, um, tight budgets so tight that we literally had to go into the pockets of our staff recently for the next year. Um, I still have questions about where we're getting this money, but when we talk about the tax dollars and, this, and the amount of money that we're gonna spend on this, it's not, and I'm gonna try to be as, I'm gonna try to be as fair and pragmatic about this as I can. Um, but it's not like going to the Mayo Clinic because typically if you have, if you're going to the Mayo Clinic, you have some great insurance. So you're, you're not, you're not probably going into your own pocket even that much to do that. You're, and you're definitely not going into the taxpayer's pocket. So we can't really use that comparison. I have some questions about the transparency around, because I know this was something even you, Andrew, had said last, last year at this time when we were gonna vote on that 394,000, your, your deal breaker was that there would be transparency throughout the process. And there just hasn't been. Um, especially, I don't know, it was like it was pretty good and then it just kind of dropped off. I'm not sure what happened. Um, I'm not sure why that happened. But two reports ago, I believe, we sat here, went through a report, but we didn't have a handout. Um, I asked about that, not sure why. Uh, when it was mentioned that there was something put into a confidential document, it was, maybe it wasn't intentional, intentional that it was put in the document, but it, what was not happening was that that report was not public. And that was literally, Andrew, your criteria to vote for that. I don't know, I, I wouldn't forget that especially considering asking for more money. And so now it's still not out there. We didn't even cover it. So maybe it wasn't intentional to go into a confidential document, but we didn't cover that. I mean, the, at the end of the day, the public hasn't seen the April report. So I guess I'd see. I'm actually not done though. Sure. Thanks. And then today, we get to the board table. This is the first time I've seen this. I didn't get this over the weekend. I don't know if any of you did. Did you? I did not. No. Mm -hmm. Did you? No. Okay. No. So this is actually not for public consumption either today, other than going through the meeting, which most people just, you know, they're not typically going to sit through all this and watch it. They also would like probably to have it with them. So. I have just some questions about our commitment to taxpayers. We, they're giving us a lot of money. And we're kind of willy-nilly throughout this, this transparency process, just in general, especially with information. If I can interject for just a moment. Go ahead. The, we have this because I called John this morning and asked him for more specific data. Okay. And had we had those meetings, we would have addressed that at that meeting. Okay, we keep and saying we. we. Right, we, but I'm just saying that that's, yeah, that's so that's why we have so it. So we, that's why we okay, it was, but you're missing the point. You. We're, we are not paying for this. And I, I feel like this is like deja vu from last year. We are not paying for this. We can have this, right? Sure. But. At the end of the day, again, the public still doesn't have that, even though you asked for it, and I'm, I appreciate that, but it's still not out there. And I'm, I'm going to be that person because I think it's easy to forget where this money is coming from. It's not grant funded. It's out of our general fund. I don't even know where this money is coming from. I'd love to know what that looks like. Um, I have a lot of concerns as well about the sustainability when we talk about all of this investment in, because what this is, is very, very expensive professional development. That's what it is. Um, you know, you had made a mention that 
this is something that the, the kids there deserve, the staff deserves. Well, you know, as mentioned, all kids deserve this. And there is a lot of discussion in the district wide from other schools and staff who are calling this institutional neglect. And that is a culture and climate problem for your district because that's a lot of money, not grant funded, put into one school with, I mean, okay. But the reality is the, the taxpayers don't have access to that. They also didn't, they're not paying for that. They're paying for what you're shooting for is the results on the forward exam. And we don't know what that is. And you continue to say it's preliminary, and I agree. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how anyone could ever throw their vote to this if they don't know if we got our money the first time around. Um, because, you know, anyone could throw this, these numbers together. What we're looking at is something that's tangible for tax dollars and that mm -hmm. is the forward sure. exam i'm not a fan of testing but this the, this has been sold to us because of that so i'm not sure how it's definitely premature it's preliminary but going back to the sustainability i'm just all over the place because i have so many thoughts on this do you want him to respond to anything no said i something? don't it's i'm I actually responding sure that to I'm what he's following said. so that mm -hmm. i can respond to each of the um not yet mm -hmm. so one thing that I, I also believe is really important, and you've asked it, other people have asked it, is the sustainability of this investment. Mm -hmm. So we are training and, and, and you know, supporting teachers and, and, and staff. Sure. But let's be real. There, that's not a sustainable body right now. So how is this investment sustainable if the staff isn't sustainable? And that's my concern because, you know, you talked about we could do this job. I mean, you were a superintendent. I would assume you could probably have some expertise there. Um, there are, there are, there's human resources in our own district, I believe, that could do what they're doing. But you're, the difference you said tonight, and I hadn't heard this before, but it, it needs to be accelerated. But what's happening, from what I've been told, I've had a lot of conversations, meetings with teachers there, it's the acceleration that is actually destructive to the climate and culture. Interesting. I know you're saying that it's positive, but the reality is that's, that's not what I'm hearing at all. And I'm going to be that voice today to make sure that it's not drowned because it's important that these people are heard. That is not experience that people are having it very well could be because of the acceleration mm -hmm. okay so you know and I know the conversation has been that well some people just you know they won't be able to handle it but that training then goes out the door when they leave and then we have new staff so how sustainable it is is it when you have continuous people taking that and leaving is, is a really big concern of mine because what we're doing with this needs to be sustainable for it to be valuable. Mm -hmm. And I've not heard anything that tells me how it is going to be sustainable, especially when I know that the staff isn't sustainable. It's not. Um, we have, that. that's, that's just, that's the truth. So I can, I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned about. Can they respond? Um, I'm almost done. Okay. Thank you. It, it's almost like it's just a given, right? If you look at this, it's around $33,000 a month. And they're going to come 34 times in the next year, right? That's what it was. So they, did they come about that this, this school year? 34 times for site visit by math instructor, 34 uh, visits mm -hmm. by literacy. Uh, the literacy instructors, 
12 times for leadership coaching and then mm -hmm. additional days for some of the uh, throughout the school year yeah. right correct yeah. okay so that's what we get for around we got for about thirty three thousand dollars a month what we don't really know though is do we have sustainable staff with that knowledge mm -hmm. enough to continue going that's a very important point um, mm -hmm. do we have what we're looking for for you know the improvements the growth we don't it's preliminary mm -hmm. we don't have that so for for us to vote on this in good faith knowing again how we went into because of a budget deficit projected budget deficit there was a lot of conversation about we have to make cuts we have to do this what are we actually going to use to pay for this and what are we not paying for? Because there, there have been conversations about transportation that's been cut in the last couple of months. Um, and there's also been issues with other schools <coughs> saying, we have needs. Why, why are they getting all of this? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if it's just there needs to be a you need to find a better way to demonstrate or explain to these other schools that, you know, we're, this isn't, and this is the word that I was given, institutional neglect. It is that we, for whatever reason you have, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you have a lot of principal turnover and a teacher that resigns at the board table, then you, you too can have this money out of the general fund. That's what they're talking about. Sorry, that's what no, they're no, talking I, about. I, I, okay, I find I'm your, done. I find okay, your. Fine. Go ahead. React, respond. Go ahead, Michelle. I'd like to start um, with the first, the first part about the purpose of the work session. This has been very important and great discussion. <coughs> and I appreciate um, all the, er, that everybody's contributed and talked about what they need to hear because uh -huh. that's really what the intent of a work session is. These documents will be posted and, and put out there for the community. We have a couple of weeks now to provide input and, and that really is how these meetings were initially intended to be, to give the board the opportunity to tell us what else they would like to talk about and need in these discussions so that we can post that. So these, this will all be posted. I think the clarity that you brought up, Christine, about what does this mean is going to have to be with it as well. I think, you know, I think as, as a community member myself and a taxpayer, I'm also very interested and wanting to make sure that mm -hmm. our investments are well. Um, as, as a superintendent, obviously, my priority are our students. And um, I think Eric said it extremely well about the investment in professional development for mm -hmm. the people who matter most in front of the children. And to your point, um, having just shared a, a document that was shared with me, written by a pediatrician um, who's also developmental, thinking about the importance of recognizing what small children need and that investment is is a clearly clearly critical and a priority as well so i think all of this is a really important discussion and feedback i think that the the sustainability piece is something we have been talking very mm -hmm. deeply about i think this is a, this is an important conversation a critical conversation at this time and I know I'm going to ask John and Judy to talk about the sustainability. It's been a conversation that we've talked about. And also, mm -hmm. to your point, Rhonda, it, you, it, the sustainability is, is deeply in, has to be deeply embedded in systems sure. as well, as well. It can't just be in people. And so we've talked about that as well in processes and procedures, which we already know we're mm -hmm. seeing significant change in our hiring practices as one example. But mm -hmm. I'll let you speak. No, and I appreciate, uh, Ms. Sitnikow, the, the passion and, and, and every, from all board members around making sure that we're very careful with our decision making here. This is a, it is an expensive investment and I think we have to be mm -hmm. th thoughtful of, of the sustainability piece as well as how does it have system mm -hmm. impact throughout yes. the rest of our schools. Um, when we look at some of the, the other uh, grant funded opportunities for, for partnering. Generally those are through uh, taxpayer supported 
uh, grants through title and things of that nature as well. So there is a taxpayer portion of that, but it is this was a conscious choice. It wasn't it wasn't a something. A lot of times when there's turnaround, it's something that's forced by the state or forced by the federal government. It's not necessarily a choice of the community and a choice of the school district. And when we had our uh, the work over the past year and a half or more related to, to Washington Middle School in uh, moving forward, I remember when we first brought forward the information about turnaround, it was because there was such a strong sense of urgency for making sure that we were doing everything we possibly could to move Washington forward. And so it was from that response that, that Dr. Langenfeld uh, and, and the rest of the team and I we worked together mm -hmm. to identify what would be the best way for us to have that sense of urgency, that impact it, for, for something that was really essentially a big, hairy problem that we hadn't experienced to this extent before and it was, it's something that, that many urban districts struggle with. And what we found mm -hmm. was that the research was there for us to work with uh, turnaround partnership. And that's, that's really where that came from, was a decision by the school board with input from the community around that sense of urgency to focus on Washington. I hear the same things about wanting to make sure we're supporting all schools and how come Washington gets more than others and what does this mean. I know that we have to have success at Washington for, for the district to be successful and for the community to be successful. And that is an imperative for, mm -hmm. for me along with the support for the other schools. Those are, those are critical pieces. Uh, regarding the transparency and, and, and the way that we've shared our reports, we've taken direction uh, on the sharing of reports from, from the board and that we were doing them on a monthly basis. And we we're finding that, that the, uh, the principal and the team were probably spending 10 to 20 hours at least mm -hmm. in preparation for those reports. And we wanted to make sure that that time was spent uh, on, on focusing on the kids. We do, the need for transparency and the need for, for scrutiny is critical. But it was through the feedback from the board that those, those reports could be something that could be delivered within our, our uh, weekly messaging rather than a formal presentation of the board. We would be glad to, to have uh, a monthly presentation if that's, if that's what we would, uh, if that's what the board would like. But that, that's where the, uh, the change occurred uh, during that time. So those are, are things that we consider. You've given us a number of things to consider. And again, this was meant as a work session. Uh, there were a number of questions and concerns that came up over the weekend and were relayed to, to me uh, today and throughout the weekend. And this, this uh, report tonight was really just an attempt to, um, to address some of those in a, in a preliminary fashion, some of the concerns. And also, as I stated in, in the, the first piece, uh, th that this was an opportunity for us to gather not answer all the questions, but gather questions for coming back. And I, I look forward mm -hmm. to the opportunity to come back and to share uh, addi additional depth because your position is not one that I envy at this point. It's the decision making around what is, what is the next step in the future for Washington Middle School. Are we going to uh, continue with the support for the accelerated turnaround or do we want to invest in another way? And I serve uh, at the superintendent's pleasure and at the board's pleasure in making sure that we're able to, to support the will of the board and the will of the community. Rhonda. Okay, I just wanna, I'd like a clarification on um, taking direction from the board as far as the, um, the transparency on the monthly reports. Uh, I don't remember ever having a conversation where we had a consensus I mean, I, I don't know if I've missed any actual board meetings, but I don't remember a, a conversation where we actually said, we don't need this information public anymore, I, because it hasn't been every time. We don't need a handout with the report. Um, those are two things that I definitely would never have agreed to, and I don't remember that conversation Anyone remember that? I mean, I, I will say this, I will say this though. I, I didn't think it was necessary to have the principal right. come to the, to the board table and do mm -hmm. that. That's what I remember, but I don't remember giving direction 
personally that these reports would be just maybe there, maybe not, not consistent, um, because it is a fact that they haven't been public every time. And it, you know, there was one that was, was marked confidential, but it, on the reverse, it wasn't actually public then either. It was, somebody had the report and it went somewhere and where it didn't go was to the public. And that's not a direction that I remember ever giving, nor would I ever. So I don't know if you remember that. Andrew? So I think, I think maybe what we need is a, I mean, I, we did, we did say that the reports would be um, available to the public. And I don't, I don't know that any of us really other, other than the statement that we didn't mean the principal presenting each month, we, we were clear that we didn't mean that. Um, I think, I think we just need some definition around and I, I don't know what the correct answer is, but if we say something like these reports will be public, uh, I think I assume that to mean that they would be uh, publicly available. I think something generally something sent to the the board is publicly available. Sometimes we put things on. I mean, would it be uh, we generally wouldn't put something on. Neptune, unless it was a discussion <laughs> item or action item for that particular month, but that could be a place for a repository of an ongoing public document. Maybe, maybe that's the correct answer. I just don't know what it what it is. But if I mean, I think I think there was some there was an understanding that there'd be a public report monthly, and uh, but that's a fair point. Where do you go to to get it if you're interested? And can I also add though? why would we have to direct that right we are literally taking a large amount of tax dollars from the public it should be a no-brainer we should just be like what do you need to see we're going to just give you what you need every month it should be a priority we shouldn't have to direct it uh, i can't imagine it would only make it easier for the public to swallow this Right, this this expenditure. If we were actually more transparent with the reports, I feel like that's just that's this, just kind of a no-brainer to me. This seems to be the uh, the critical point on transparency, and I think it'll be good for us to go back and look at uh, some of the, the the past board meetings, and we can take a look to see. Be, if it was a misunderstanding on my part that it needed to be su just submitted as an electronic document that was shared, it's easy. then then that is I will fully own that and I apologize mm -hmm. to the public and to mm -hmm. the board as a whole. Um, but does anyone else remember? Because I mean, we're all there's a lot of us sitting here. What do you remember? Anyone? I don't remember any. I don't remember, I remember any specific, specific conversation. conversation. And I think there was some discussion with regard to whether or not we needed to have Cindy right. here right. every there was. month. And I think we can all agree we don't want you all spending 10 to 20 hours a month preparing no. board no. reports. I mean, that sure. is ludicrous. But, I think remedy, but you're going right. to go to going to. But it is an issue that, right. again, we didn't mean for the April one to be confidential. The March one didn't have a handout, or the April. The main one was confidential. The April one didn't have a handout, right? And so the sure. last time the public had a public facing report would have been March on this. I don't So is this that? but this is yeah. the so, April anyways. this is the April copy. Right. This is so April. the March would have been shared and we'll right. be glad to share yeah. May right. and we can even I, I think we could come back. I'm just with saying that. it's been yeah. two and a half months now since there's okay. been document. I'm trying to problem solve here yeah. too and sure. put other pieces together and I, I extend the same apology if we sure. didn't understand what we were supposed to do accurately and the April one was a was certainly not supposed to be none of these documents have been or have ever been not public. Mm -hmm. So then the question is should there be a repository mm -hmm. sure. just that says Air Washington. Sure. It's sure. easy to do. I mean, yeah. that's not hard. So we can put that's those back great. and yeah, archive them because they are mm -hmm. available. Some are, I mean, they're hard mm -hmm. to find if they're mm -hmm. online right. in a board meeting, too. Right. I would get behind that. Yeah, so yeah, no, if, that's, that's, if that's really what would be most helpful, yeah, then we certainly can do that because we have them, and I would assume you have them sure. somewhere sure. as well. And I think that would be great if we can share the uh, 
that and also make sure that we're posting our annual end of year report with with that as I'm certain that that's something you want shared publicly and that's something that we'll be glad to, to put together I think you've given us a lot of different things mm -hmm. that we can uh, ensure that will be added that's okay go ahead. I just have a very quick question sorry sure. I know we're like trying to wrap this up um, I uh, it's my understanding that 1819 funding for the AIR for AIR did not include work around climate culture correct not as specific to, to that AIR. As academics because right. we were focusing more on the academic piece right, right. Sure right. but I'm just making sure yep. that okay for 1920 it seems that that is part of the proposal that AIR is going that's part of the investment am I understanding that correctly it will be included to, to <coughs> An extent through the leadership coaching okay and then we're also mm -hmm. looking at what systemic pieces we can make sure we're linking to related to uh, our own support within our departments mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well as uh, through AIR okay. we've been in touch with their um, their their uh, and I'm forgetting the name of the the, the uh, group but it's the mm -hmm. the culture and uh, engagement arm mm -hmm. of AIR. So that's a yeah. shift from 1819 to 1920. That will be something that will continue okay. Thank you. within yes. some mm -hmm. of our work. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Just making sure I understood that correctly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't think this was answered, but sure. hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Okay. Um, where is this money coming from? Where is this, where is this 286,000 additional dollars coming from in the budget? Because I, just remember a lot of conversation about cuts, budgets are tight, mm -hmm. deficits, all of that. So where is that coming from? So or where could we find it? It's it's something that we've designated because we believe it's, it's critical uh, for us as a district. Mm -hmm. And if we think about this is something that's uh, raising the level of universal practice, not just at Washington, but throughout the district. We're focusing on how we're teaching and teaching better. And we're focusing on how we serve students' social emotional learning needs and how we can do that better as a system. And if we're able to enhance not only at Washington but throughout the district to an extent, there will be less need as well uh, for interventionists and coaches and things of that nature. So really it's, it's intended that as we raise the level overall, there will be less need for uh, safety nets for kids that are falling through the cracks because we'll be preventing cracks to begin with. As far as where the funding is coming from for this coming year, that's something that's been built within uh, the teaching and learning budget, uh, within our professional learning. Still within that budget, we have a significant decrease overall of uh, the, the professional learning uh, budget that we have within teaching and learning. This is something that has been identified by us as something that's valuable, yet overall we have uh, reduction because we realize it is a time of fiscal responsibility and if we're asking everybody to tighten their belts, mm -hmm. we have to make sure that our departmental belt is tightened as well. Mm -hmm. But to that, right, we don't have money built in for uh, taking, um, you know, reducing the, the pressure in some of these class sizes that we have, um, that doesn't seem to be a priority. I, I, I would disagree. I think that we've, uh, we've invested multiple uh, millions of dollars of additional funding towards staffing despite a decreasing enrollment. So as the class size is lowering, we're investing, um, I want to say, $6 million in the past special education in special education mm, supports in addition to increases in paraprofessionals and regular education okay. teachers all the while while our, our uh, student population is decreasing but I don't want this to be an argument about do we fund the teacher or do we fund the improvement effort it there there are we do have to consider those variables and mm -hmm. it really is that's that is board governance mm -hmm. of deciding where to budget and items fall. It's and not an argument. Important. It's actually a, it's a conversation that's very. Oh, I didn't mean it. It's no, I'm just sorry. gonna just. Sure. It's it's not an argument. It's actually. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't just wake up in the morning and just want to say all these things. I I'm literally taking voices from staff in the district who are saying these exact things. So, it's actually not an argument. It's a concern. It's sometimes a, sure. is a deal breaker if I'm going to stay and work in this mm -hmm. district. It's literally. It is, is a, it is a live, ongoing conversation that's happening, and it's a question that I have to answer as a board member. You decided to spend this much money. Sure. I could have had someone coming into my science class, and I could have had some relief there. 
there could have been better integrity in, in the lab mm -hmm. work. Um, but now that money is not there. So I don't really know how to answer that. I just want to clarify that, and I know the, the gentleman who spoke at the open forum said that we could have higher social workers, but this is a one-time expense. It's not a, a yearly expense. It's not a sustainable thing. I do think we need to be mindful and more deliberate about when we're using the information that we're gleaning from the air process we need to let the other people in the district know that where this came from and that this is a benefit of what air has done at washington as we move forward and use it in other schools people need to know that this information has been gleaned from this process and people need to know that what they're learning from air mm -hmm. is relevant stuff so it's not stuff that you know we're not looking for teachers to just do more work it has sure. to be relevant sure. work they have to see the benefit of what they're being asked to do sure and i really welcome the the discussion and dialogue we've had tonight i didn't mean to characterize it as as argument uh, sometimes when we're pushing for something and we're wanting something and we're bringing it as a proposal sometimes it tends to i'll let to, you know to, to go in that direction we're not exactly. there yet. <laughs> but uh really this comes it's it's the board's decision and i think that the board has to come down to a decision at some point our we want to make sure we provide as much information as possible about our proposal but indeed it is a proposal mm -hmm. and it's a proposal that the board can consider in the scope of uh, how do we want to continue at washington do we want to continue with the turnaround support or do we want to consider spending the resource elsewhere and really um, in, in the end we will continue mm -hmm. to support Washington yes. and we will continue to have turnaround process in place mm -hmm. um, the acceleration might slow but we will always be there supporting at Washington and elsewhere and That's we really job. appreciate the dialogue is there any more information that board members need for Brenda no I just have some things I want to say that's okay you can ask your question first. The, uh, just if, if there's anything else, any other information that you would like John and Judy to provide us as we move forward and continue the discussion on this, let either speak now after Brenda because I called on her first. Um, okay. Okay. Go ahead. All right. So I just wanted to uh, comment on a couple of things that have been said, <clears throat> especially for the benefit of you know, Eric, Christina, who weren't here last year when we went out through all of this conversation. Um, one of the things when we talked about culture climate um, when last a year ago when we were talking about this, I think the emphasis on uh, professional development to improve instruction was also um, has been shown to decrease um, behaviors in classrooms because students are more engaged. And so that was the, the reason why, you know, they, they put the investment in, in improving, uh, making sure that the instruction was very engaging um, and now turning toward, you know, looking more directly at culture and climate. Um, regarding the NCEs, I do know that the NCE scores predict the forward exam. Um, and so when we look at, we look at star testing um, that is an indicator of how students will will perform on the forward exam and then the concern about teachers leaving after they've had professional development um, <clears throat> and that's always our concern I mean we have that in every single school that we provide mm -hmm. professional development in and I think it's not for me not a reason not to continue providing that professional development but every school district you know, invests in teachers and then for um, various reasons, you know, the teachers may not stay. But I think it goes back again to the, the, the culture of the school. When you invest in professional development, you're investing in the, the collective skill set of teachers. And just because you lose one teacher doesn't mean you lose that percentage of, of the skill set because a new teacher comes in and are surrounded by teachers that have been trained and have that, that skill set. Um, because we provide professional development, I mean, our IB, we provide yes. almost $300,000, you know, for their professional development. And in that case, I would say the, you know, the same 
the same concern is what happens when a teacher leaves, but that's not something that we can very easily, you know, fix that problem. I just think we need to continue investing in our teachers. And um, if all of us in the country are investing in our teachers, then the teacher we get to replace the teacher that's left has hopefully comes with, you know, also improved skills from the professional development they got. But to that to that point, though, um, this is literally like. I mean, and we're, this is year two, so if we go to another year, the average AIR proposal that's out there that was met and, you know, they looked through the, t the testimonials that we were given, was it was over a million dollars when it was all said and done. So that's, that's an entirely different level of professional development. You better have good retention if you're going to have that kind of investment. And we're not talking about just normal atypical professional development. It's also, um, I'm sorry, it's a lot of pressure on the teachers as well. And I, no one's ever said this, but it's, it's as if it's their fault that things are happening the way they are. Um, and that's also been something that's been shared with me and, and I wanted to just to th say that out loud because that is how they're feeling. Um, that it's all up to them now. We have to, you know, we can't leave. We've, you've been invested in. Um, there's a lot of angst with that. I've been told as well. So it's not the same as professional development throughout the district. We absolutely cannot even pretend it is. No, but the compar comparison with IB is. I mean, that's a comparable investment. Any other? Questions, comments? Okay, Michelle. I um, certainly appreciate this discussion, and I know mm -hmm. that um, John and and Judy have worked very hard with with the team, and I've been part of some of those discussions. But certainly, working, I think that the piece that we keep trying to put into perspective is that we recognize that we have 42 soon to be 43 schools, and that's why we take this very seriously and we know that the board has a very important decision because it is a balance between class size and even if we provide significant rationale it doesn't impact directly maybe a classroom teacher in another school and that may not be you know an answer that they're looking for the reality is at the end of the day I'll say it and I've said it before and I'm going to say it again we have a shared imperative we want to serve children, and we want to serve children well so that they have what they need to be successful. And we've been fortunate these last uh, couple of days to see the results of the investment in children um, who've walked across the stage, <coughs> beginning with Minoka, 145 graduates that wouldn't have been there a couple of years ago, that the board made an important investment decision to go there. Um, and that was a, a that was a big decision, and, it, and I'm sure challenging at that time. In addition, we had another 40 some graduates who walked the stage yesterday, who were part of another program that the board had to make an important decision because sometimes equity and and dollars don't always equate. And so this is this is be one of those important decisions that the board will have to. Uh, make and we will bring back everything that you mm -hmm. that we can sure. mm -hmm. that you've asked yes. for. Mm -hmm. I would say that that conversation continues, so that and that's what the discussion at a work session is intended to do, is to open those doors. Again, I think the meetings that are missed will help um, mm -hmm. improve this. But again, we are about continuous improvement. We are about children, and we care deeply about Washington. We care about all of our school's children. And that's something that everybody at this table, I think, can agree with as well. So moving forward, we'll bring back that information. Mm -hmm. yes. um, and again, I appreciate your work and, and appreciate all the really important discussion at this table tonight. It's we been very good. appreciate the time and attention of the board. Thank mm -hmm. you for having no. this courageous Is conversation. Mm -hmm. Good discourse. Any public Thank comment? You. Betty, could you please come up to the, I can't hear you. That's a, that's a really good question, and I'm, I'm going to look to communications and see where the best place. We'll look into it. Good. 
We would just like to know where the public can find all the public documents about AIR when we go home. Not tonight, but I'm saying can we I don't want to wait for two more we weeks can. to find out where they are. No, no, we'll get yeah, that before you. that. I, right, now, right now they're in Neptune. But you'd have to know you'd the You'd have to search for them. So, pardon? That's, the, that's not all of them. Where they're missing a bunch. Just one. Well, we, can, we can compile them. Yeah, we can put them in a Google yeah. Doc. Yeah. I don't have a Google folder for anybody. A what? A Google folder. Like a no, we can't open those. Why? Because we don't have access. No, it would be Google, Google email, Gmail. No. Google. No. Eddie, I don't. Open Who doesn't? If it's for one, I'm an exhausted mind. We will. We will see what. We'll figure it out and let you know. Can we? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that concludes our portion of the work session. All right, we're going to take a break um, just for five minutes, so come back when you can. <coughs> oh, we're good. All right. Thanks, Dean. All right, next is our organizational support work session. That will be facilitated by Andrew Becker. All right, thank you. So under um, discussion items, business and finance, we have none. Under human resources, we have a superintendent search process. And um, Eric, you have some information on that? Yeah, so I um, sent a document um, that was essentially just some, some thoughts and information meant to be a conversation starter um, around one um, kind of what would we be looking for in, in the next superintendent um, and some different things to consider. And if anyone has any reactions to it's actually the second doc, second page of that document. Um, but just, you know, what are we looking for in a leader? What are we looking for in a superintendent? And then what are the unique needs of our district? So different things to consider. Um, the first page is just a rough draft of a timeline. Again, this was just sort of in my head, best guess. If somebody had other feedback or a different uh, suggestion, I would want to uh, talk about that. But really today, what I'd, I'd like to at least leave today's discussion with is around that, that first June, July, because that's where we are right now, um, around board member listening sessions. So once we hire, uh, if, if we choose to hire, and when we go with a search firm, um, they'll uh, lead a lot of that process. And it's meant to sort of separate the board um, from that, both for uh, internal candidates and also just to be able to make sure that we're, we're reaching out and finding the best people possible. Um, but before that, I could see a lot of benefit in, in the board being involved in some of the, the community uh, listening sessions for a lot of different reasons, which I won't get into now. Um, so I personally, and, and I, I don't know if other people feel this way, and it doesn't have to be a consensus, um, if, if we do some of that work or facilitate it or are just involved, I don't know exactly what that looks like. I don't know how that comes with like posting meetings if we're out uh, doing that work, so that might come into play here. but. Um, Doing some legwork before uh, go, um, bringing on a search firm, I think, would be important. So, um, curious to hear any and all reactions. I did provide two uh, links to articles. Again, just things that I found that I, I thought were most valuable in some of the research that I did over the last two weeks. So, all right. uh, questions or comments, Brenda? Um, actually, a quick question for Melissa. The board um if we were to do board member listening sessions would we have to if it was uh i mean are you thinking of this like whole board two board members yeah yeah two, maybe one or two board if because if we want to reach the most people maybe one or two board members is just what i was thinking but and so then what the requirements um would be for posting i mean i assume if we have our own personal you know individual conversation with with people um, would that require a posting? You run into someone on the street and you're having a conversation with someone? Yes. No. Okay. No. But if we set up an official... I, I would... I hope I gave the right answer on that. <laughs> but I mean, but, or even just, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, meeting with somebody for something else and, and I ask them yeah. <clears throat> a question about... If I could, I... I wasn't sure the direct. I didn't didn't receive Eric's document, so I wasn't sure the direction of tonight's discussion. The superintendent's search is pretty highly scripted with respect to what has to be posted, and so I I would like 
to be able to go back okay. and just lay that all out. Um, I know it, my experience has been working with a search firm, and as Eric recognized, the purpose of that search firm. I, I'm going to tell you, I, I've done superintendent search and internally to not have a search firm. It's it's very very difficult given the amount of and Sandy may Sandy's done more than I have. Um, the amount of requirements and um, just logistics and all that sort of thing. So with that caveat, I, w I can go back and then look through my resources. Um, we're going to be having a transition in human resources, you know, all of that. Sure. I, I wonder too about um, totally get all of that in play. And I, I don't know maybe if we're going to have that discussion now about a search firm. Um, what if we, you know, if I know of a community leader um, and I said, hey, I would, if you would, other person would be willing to get some people together and do something on your own, whether I attended or not, I don't know if that changes the answer, but um, I would like you to reach out to people that you're connected with in the community, ask some basic questions, and then bring me that feedback. So um, maybe I'm not involved in it, but I, I'm specifically targeting uh, maybe a population or, or a neighborhood or something like that. Um, you know, like, let's say a neighborhood association. So if I went to the neighborhood association president and said, hey, this is something that we'd like some feedback on at your next neighborhood association meeting, could you ask these three or four questions and then report back to me on what you hear? That, that, that's what I'm envisioning. Yeah. I'm, I'm not so what, I think what would be helpful if you and I talked as to what you're envisioning and then I... And I don't know if that's what everyone else is And then I can go back and... I, I would hate to though, because there is a science to this too, that, and that's why search firms are search firms. So I would hate, I would like to hear what you're thinking and I know T Terry was here, um, just so that we're not... There, there's a method to the madness with respect to superintendent searches and, and that sort of thing. So if, if you and I want to talk and then we can work to and see um, what you're looking at with respect to legal requirements and, and those sorts of things, that would be probably helpful. Okay. Yeah. Christina? Um, I would like to be a part of that conversation because I'm really just curious about the process and I'd love to learn more about what you've done in the past. Um, so I don't know if we could set something, we'd have to post it obviously, sure. but I, I, I think there would be value in that if other board members wanted to schedule maybe a separate time to do a little bit of a debrief of what the history is, to get a little bit more into the weeds with you and to flush this out. Because I think this looks great, but I agree. One of the things I was thinking, um, Eric, was like community engagement was like, how do we ensure that folks who have deep trust and relationships within communities are a part of the not necessarily maybe the facilitation, but are the ones inviting folks into the room so we're not expecting people to come to us and like how do we identify who those people are and I don't know, there's just so many moving, different moving pieces in. And, so and would you all be of that, that is part of a yeah. search, that you go to the community, you go to various different groups. So Again, would you be open to doing, would, would you suggest that maybe we like take this to a separate meeting to flush out those details or? What would your expert, what would your opinion be? Sure, and I'd like to involve Sandy too because we can pull the history of what we've done here um, and look at the various different groups. Um, I mean, clearly we ended up with a good candidate this time, so I think that we've um, done a, a nice job in, in matching the needs to what the district is. So I'd, I'd like to at least have a chance to mm -hmm. study to what we've done in the past and the groups we've consulted and, um, and, and look at that. When we met with the board, with the search firm, once they select the search firm, that's when the board meets with the search firm and they develop mm -hmm. what groups, what stakeholders, the guiding questions and all of the pieces. So Sandy, are you saying that the, the first step is to for the board to choose that firm? And that's that they usually what happened. The last two I've been involved in that's and then that they that's help facilitate what we're what we're looking for and that feeds out into the community. Okay. I guess what, what, what I just want to make sure to avoid, and maybe uh, the board led part of it, but if, and I guess this is a good question for a search, um, for, for the search committee, is to, if a search committee facilitates and says, we want to meet with uh, or get the voice of the Hispanic population, the Hispanic population looks at uh, 
this search firm and never has never heard of them before and it isn't comfortable and says, well, I'm not going to participate in that. Um, and then we don't feel like we've engaged a certain population of the community or a certain um, subset uh, that I would value. And so I want to make sure, and again, maybe they can help us with this, but that, that we're thinking uh, from a cultural lens on how we get everyone's feedback. Simply sending out a survey, getting some responses and say, well, we asked everyone's right, feedback. Right. Well, that, I, I, I don't put a lot of value on that. So, that's not my experience. Yeah. So maybe maybe that's that's the case. Um, Sandy, did you do an RFP for your search firm? Yep. So I think really the first step is developing that RFP for the search firm, and then. Um, and I've got Jake already working on that. Okay. Oh, okay. So you already have. And, and I think what happened last time, and I asked this question, but that we did the RFP and then we picked the top three candidates, and then we actually, as the board, got to interview them. So so, and then being able to ask questions and things of, of that nature firm. of the yes. search firm, right? Mm -hmm. um, so maybe the questions that I'm asking now are questions that we ask for them, and if we want an opportunity to be involved in that, so the search firm can help us with it. They send representatives um, from their companies to meet with us and mm -hmm. off and tell us we like their 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 menu yeah. of services and what. Right. Okay. And I mentioned in the and Sandy and I talked about this that it's no secret to these search firms that we're going to be going through this process, so they're ready to they're go. The right they're they're waiting for the RFP yeah. to be released yeah. and they're going to respond to it. Right. So What's right. the turnaround time from create? I'm sorry. Were you going to say something? No. <laughs> from creating the RFP, putting it out, and then moving that forward with interviews. It took a while. Really quick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Quick turnaround. Because they're all ready. Yeah. They're like, oh, Green Bay is going to be looking for some time. They're watching yeah. for the you know, Two I'm weeks. Wondering, <coughs> I'm wondering if we can, um, I'd, I'd be curious if a search firm is interested in being hired earlier than what would necessarily make sense with our timeline so that we would then have a little bit more time, because we have the luxury of time. That we, so that we would have a little bit more time to establish, you know, what are our goals in terms of getting community feedback, you know, and then also we would interview them yeah. and ask them, you know, how do you see helping us be able to make sure yeah. we get to the people we want to get to? But, but because we have the, the luxury of time, I want to make sure we do it right. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to all of a sudden be like, oh, we had all this time, wish we yeah. would have done this, yeah. this, and, and this. this Which is why, so you know, at the last meeting I said, hey, can we start talking about this because we do have a lot of time, which is great. Let's take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. But maybe that would, you know, if you uh, are, I don't know, can just kind of pull a couple search firms and just say, what if we were to hire you in, you know, mid-July, even though, you know, we wouldn't really hit the ground running until October. We could know. add that, Brenda, into the questions for the RFP. Yeah. And have it but be I mean, a formal but we have response. To, because but we get, but we if we, yeah, that's true. Because then the RFP process doesn't have to be fast. Right. We can, we can, oops, sorry, have a, oh, say sorry to your computer. Um, we can have, uh, um, yeah, that's true. We can have that luxury of. I, I prefer to start, and, I'm speaking on behalf of Terry, but um, I, it would be good to start now getting that RFP out during the summer process so that we have the, the luxury of time. I, I think you're in a better off position as a board and can be more deliberate and intentional with your community mm -hmm. um, information meetings and gathering input from the community and gives you the time to make sure you've hit all of those groups, especially given how busy our community is. Yeah. What does the process look like from receiving 10 RF to 10 responses to picking? What we did the last couple times is we had a small board work group that paper screened the copies or the, the people that submitted mm -hmm. and it was probably about 10, 8 to 10 companies that submitted um, and then the, they used a rubric on who to, who to select like the top three or I think we interviewed three last time if so. I remember right. Mm -hmm. um, then, the, then the full board interviews those three or four, whatever you want to do. Sure. Um, that's what we did the last time. Cindy, do you remember just off the top of your head, were those um, companies mostly um, from outside the state? Okay. There might have been a couple that were inside the state, but most yeah. of them are 
And, and did the did the district go with someone from out of state yes. eventually? The okay. most recent one was from was it Iowa? Iowa. Yeah. Okay. All right. And other questions? Well, so I'm wondering if um, you can think about this, but but if you want to put this back on our agenda in two weeks, um, and the board could give feedback on what we would want in the RFP. And then, and then move forward with the RFP. That way, you have all everybody's input in terms of, you know, what we would hope. The RFP was very simple the last time because oh. these companies all have. Yeah, it's pretty formulated. It's, yeah, oh, it's okay. already, you know, so mm -hmm. they've already got this all ready to go, probably. So the the RFP was quite simple. It was like I don't know eight questions or something like that, Gene, if I remember right. Um, so Eric, you can look at it. And yeah, you can I mean, yeah. I, I would gain more from wanting to sit down across the table and ask my personal questions than to have them take the time to write a formal right. response. I think the interviews were like an hour each. Yeah. Okay. And actually, Companies. to your point, the board can offer interview questions, yes. things they'd like to be yes. asked at the interview, uh, yes. rather than what they want included in the RFP. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so would you like us to proceed with formalizing the RFP? Yeah, I think so. And okay. Does it sound like the sooner we get that out, the better? What do we want? Right. Yeah, we have nothing right. to lose, I think. Yeah. 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 Because okay. yeah, once we do the RFP, we don't have to hire them the next day. I mean, no. Right. No, but the summer is going to take some yeah, we, we can, can let, let them, them know, know we're interested because there are going to be other districts yep. looking yeah. for superintendents yeah. as yeah. well, and we can true. at least get them lined so, up. So, okay. yeah, let's okay. get the RFP ready to okay. go. and. Good. Start that process. And to your point about going to like to meet with Hispanic population at like St. Will Brothers or something like that, we don't need to have. We can do that. We can, you know, we don't need to. We need to be. We can be sensitive to who, who should does present the and, process. Right. Right. Sure. But they. Okay. Yeah. As we get closer to having an actual, a meet the candidate kind of thing, then they can, kind of lead that. Yeah. Process. Okay. But for the individual groups, we can do that. Okay. Uh, anything else? All right. And then we have under discussion public comment, uh, we have the Green Bay. First, we have the Green Bay Safe Walk and Bike Draft Plan. Jeremy is power hey, walking Jeremy. to the table. Good evening. I want to be respectful of your time. Um, this is just a short visit. Um, to one of many I'll be making in the next two weeks to various public meetings. Um, to just kind of refresh your memory on our process uh, toward completion of the Safe Routes project, Safe Walk and Bike Green Bay. Um, there will be a meeting on the 10th that will go to the Planning Commission at uh, Green Bay City Hall at 6 p.m. in room 604 uh, on June 10th. And on the 17th, we'll be back here. Um, and on the 18th, we will um, We'll be in city council in the council chamber at 6 p.m. Um, as well. So those are the other public meetings that are coming up, and I will be at all of them if you want to spend some time together. Um, the uh, the proposal or, or the um, presentation that the consultant tool design is going to be uh, making at those, those meetings on the 17th and 18th is um, going to be fairly similar, but not the same. Um, it's going to have a background of the plan and the team that was created to guide our plan uh, to completion, the planning process that we went through, the plan recommendations, um, the implementation that is anticipated in next steps after the plan would be accepted. Um, the slight variation would be that plan recommendations part. Um, for the school board, we would be primarily focusing on the non-infrastructure initiatives, uh, education, um, uh, evaluation, encouragement, um, and uh, pieces. And at the city council, we'll be focusing primarily on the infrastructure and the enforcement uh, portions that are more most applicable to each body. Um, so that will be what we'll be covering. And I see some of you looking through your binders. So I'm glad to see you got your um, that small, easy reading document. I would love to go through all 470 pages, but um, unfortunately, I think that other discussion took a little longer than we expected. So, um, any questions? 
Jimmy, how did all of this start? Like, where did it, like, whose idea was like, hey, we got to fix this? Or I did, keep asking myself that question. How did yeah. you get yourself um, into this? Especially this month. <laughs> um, it, this started with a conversation that Brown County Planning Commission approached us at the district and said, you know, every, every year we, they are soliciting proposals. You know, they give, they give that money away. They award that money and they were short on proposals and they thought it would be great if Green Bay Public Schools might be interested in doing that. And Vicki Beyer, uh, former CFO Andrew Zarno and um, Kim Shanek with Community Partnerships, all of us got together and discussed it. And, and we thought this would be great for our kids to, to focus on um, keeping them healthy and, and finding safe ways to get them to school. And what, how long ago was that? That was about almost three years ago, I believe. Wow. Yeah. So it's been a that's really cool been a good long pro project, good yeah. process. <laughs> Other questions, Brenda? So I, I forgot. Will we <clears throat> will we be voting on this on the seventeenth? I'll be making a motion to to have to you accept, accept the plan. Accept it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All Contingent right. upon funding and, and all of that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Okay. And is that the other places you're going? Um, the planning commission will make a will make, make a, a motion. A motion and, and vote on accepting it. And city council it. as well yeah. to accept the plan as, as okay. presented. Yes. Okay, um, so, I, it's, sorry. Rhonda, go ahead. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 So for this to happen, right, to be rolled out, the city has to accept it. The school district has to accept it. Let's say we both accept it. Then what is after that? Um, that will um, then once both bodies accept the plan, it will be uh, officially accepted. We'll have our, um, obviously we'll have a press release and then we'll move into that implementation phase next steps. Initially the, the talk is to um, have a governing body that is made up of um, multiple entities that represent both the city and the school district um, and include community input uh, mm -hmm. like Wello, uh, for example, mm -hmm. to guide future initiatives with an annual um, update to the board and to the city council on the progress we've made um, and you know what initiatives have been ticked off that list of, of uh, recommendations. So that group would determine um, priority as well. That group would um, not determine priority, um, but that group would um, be a body that would kind of serve as a liaison between the city and the and the school district, um, and keep that great partnership that we've developed open and alive, mm -hmm. so that we would uh, not be going going it alone on future um, projects. And, and the real purpose, one of the main purposes of this plan is to give us a solid foundation um, to secure grant funding um, mm -hmm. for the future. And, and that's, you know, hopefully how, what we can uh, achieve through that um, focus, that work group, I guess, almost like a steering committee. Mm -hmm. yeah. Brenda? And so who will set the priority for, because there's, tons of projects in here who who will be the body that decides what comes first what gets done first um, well I think the the plan has priorities in it already so that that will be one of the motions you'll be moving toward and and I think annually um, a lot of these projects the the concept of this plan um, really focuses a lot on um, doing projects that already coincide with the work that each body is doing so as we put in facilities at schools or around schools or as the city puts in infrastructure and redoes roads, this plan would be something that they would look at and say, here are the recommendations that we could kind of tick off the list that would be best. And so a lot of that is going to be worked into existing projects. But, you know, there could be, you know, if either body, the city council or plan commission or the school board were to have suggestions um, toward that steering committee, then obviously we would all uh, work on that together, I, I would say. So these, I just found one of your priorities. So these weighted scores are going to be what guide the choices for first project, second project? Theoretically, yes. Theoretically, yeah. Is that on, Brenda? Well, one of them's on 82. I looked in the okay. table of contents and there's yep. okay. Yes, multiple. that's what I was looking for, actually. Thank yeah. you. There's, um, the bicycle one has implementation time frames. And the sidewalk has implementation time frames. Yes. Yeah, okay. Other questions? Laura. Um, 
I was included in some of your meetings, which I really uh, enjoyed and I learned a lot about the city I live in. Um, and I just know looking at this, that this represents years and of, of effort on, on your part individually and as a collective group. But, but I know that you worked very, very hard on this. And I just want to thank you for your commitment to this process. Thank, thank you. So, yeah. All right. Um, anything else? So then we will be voting on motion. We'll have motions presented related to this for the 17th. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next, um, any 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 public comment on that? Okay. Then next up, we have the CISA 7 2019-2020 contract. Uh, do you have information to present? Okay. Are there any questions about the CISA contract? Yeah. Rhonda. Can you refresh our memory or I guess state again, our, because it said that there's still video production happening. Are we getting new equipment that CISA is going to use to record or how is this working? Because. We were, a couple of us were t just discussing this. We don't really remember the, the facts on that. The estimate that's in the proposal uh, for the $15,000, that is for the cost of the closed captioning and putting the graphics on the raw video. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is the estimate. That's, the cost will be totally dependent on how many board meetings you have and how long your board meetings are. But there was discussion about us getting new equipment as well. Yep, that's right? coming in next week. Okay. Yep. And so, so they're still providing the service for us, though. So they they won't be doing. So what the service they're providing is they're providing final production. So that's mm -hmm. meaning taking the raw video that we'll be recording here on our own, and uh, putting the graphics on it. So that's adding your pictures. That's adding the closed captioning. Those kinds of things. Um, that's all they're doing. And then okay. and uploading it to the YouTube channel for okay. us. Okay, thank you. I just noticed this disclaimer. If a meeting exceeds five hours, the captioning will be done, will be completed as soon as possible. Our goal is to get these under five hours. So, okay, there it is. Five. Okay. <clears throat> um, any other questions on CISA? I just found that. Any public comment on CISA? All right, we will move that. Forward procurement and purchasing policy, uh, 672 with rule and exhibit. Any presentation? You have the information in front of you. It's really um, being brought to you because of a change in the federal uh, grant guidance and increasing those amounts, which will make it easier on our end um, in securing those bids because right now we're finding that contractors are, they know that we need to get the bids and they're declining to bid because they are realizing we're just needing to get the bids in order to make a purchase. Mm. Mm. So this this will help us in securing those bids. Okay. Okay. Questions? All right. And um, all right. Public comments. Okay. Uh, human resources. Then first item: Prevea Partnered Health Offering. <coughs> Uh, pleased to uh, tell you that we um, are partnering with Prevea uh, to offer something that Prevea is entitled Prevea Partnered Health, and it will allow us to offer a lower cost uh, service to our employees and their families who are on an insurance plan. So for a, a charge for the district of $75 per visit, Prevea would offer their primary care, urgent care settings, um, physical therapy, a $10 copay to our employees and their families, and uh, immunizations, and I, I attached to the memo the list of the different um, offerings that Prevea would provide um, at no cost to the employee and uh, $75 per visit uh, for the, for, to the district. Again, um, I think that uh, this would be an enhancement to our plan. Um, this would not run through insurance, and um, we would be direct billed for the services. Prevea is offering this to other um, organizations that have a relationship with Prevea, and we do because we um, work with them through our, our health and wellness uh, clinic downstairs. Um, 
the next step would be if the board would approve this on the 17th, uh, we would be entering into a contract with Prevea and then working with them to start the service probably sometime in uh, later summer, late uh, July, summer, or August. And um, um, any, do you have any questions at all? Anything that? Questions? Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, any, uh, any public comment on that one? All right, then we have the um, AVID coordinator and district alternative placement tutor coordinator job description. Uh, questions on that? Michelle? Vicki, I'm not sure where she stepped out, but this particular position currently exists, the coordinator position exists. What this does is extend the coordinator's um, responsibilities, really starts to look at, um, I think you just joined us, um, the, the, the importance of as students are um, given alternative kinds of learning experiences, potentially following an expulsion or what have you, and if they're going to receive services, not in one of our educational settings, but outside of our settings. Um, that would be one of the responsibilities. I'm, I think that's one of the biggest pieces. And maybe, Vicki, you could describe that. The district alternative placement tutor coordinator right. is that second part of this addition to this. It's job. attached to the, the AVID position. Her original job description isn't appropriate at all. She's been underpaid for the work that she's been doing for many, many years. And we're trying to correct that and do the right thing. The second piece is exactly what Dr. Langenfeld just mentioned, the number of students. Right now, receiving one-to-one -one tutoring off campus is about 32, and that's beyond the capacity for our teachers right now. So Paulette, uh, if the board approves, we would move her into that position where she can provide the support that they would need. Question? Just a comment. It was great to see all these kids coming through graduation with their AVID yeah. medals yeah. Yeah. around their necks. Thank you. That was impressive. Other, other questions? Okay. Uh, public you. comment? Okay, we'll move that forward. We have the uh, after school site director coordinator job description. school programming it um, was brought to our attention and was very much a part of the monitoring reports we received from the Department of Public Instruction um, that said we needed these this position so Andrea and Lisa are here to talk about that. thank you for allowing us to speak tonight about this position um, this is Lisa Johnson she is the coordinator of after school programming and summer school so this position it, it, it was, is very much needed. It's really to provide coaching and mentoring to our after-school site directors to really help them focus on um, curriculum planning and the development of engaging project-based learning um, throughout. Um, and it's something that we recognize that is a need to be able to spend more time with our with our after-school folks. We also discussed that the position really is to support the work that is be being done in the schools. In addition to that, it is grant funded, so it's coming out of the 21 CCLC fund. Um, each one of the 13 sites that have the funding, we would be taking some of the uh, grant money to pull it together to create this one position mm -hmm. that would support all of the sites. Okay. Uh Christina? I just want to say that I just really, um, I liked the job description and how you set this up. And I like that it's, you know, oftentimes when you see coordinator positions, it's a very low level, low paying job. And these folks are being asked to do a heavy lift and their expertise needs to be honored. And I just appreciate that you've elevated this job because it needs to be. Um, and I think it will serve our kids well. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa has been advocating um, for a year now for the position. Um, has really done a great job of um, doing an analysis of where the needs are and um, really supported the writing of the job description. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank Anything you. else? Thank you. All right. And then um, the questions will probably overlap so we can just probably take the, for the work session purpose, just take the four 
IT job descriptions. Any uh, questions on those? Uh, Michelle? Just make a comment. Um, the, this, as, as I mentioned in the beginning of our discussion um, tonight um, with the COO position, we are not replacing the Chief um, Information Technology Officer, um, Diane Dirsch, in her retirement. But what we are doing is reallocating the work. So in other words, we are, we are going to be sure it, we're losing a position to flatten the organization, but we have to do some adjusting to address the workload. Um, so that while, while we were trying to do that. So that's what these positions actually represent. So for example, um, Josh Patrick, who is here, is currently the director of technology. He will become the executive director, and the director of technology position will be removed from the table of organization. And he will receive, because of increased <coughs> responsibility, some increase in salary. But it's important to recognize that we, and we'll bring that back, um, the, the cost savings when with Diane not um, being replaced at this time. The instructional technology coordinator takes on a little bit more responsibility. He currently is in a position right now, so it's a little bit, um, I think it's, I, I can't recall, Jean, I don't know, it's a minimal pay change, but, but it is some. And then the computer maintenance supervisor, again, the same kind of um, shift in, in uh, in responsibilities, uh, some additional, but it's part of the reorganization as we move forward to um, absorb the work that still has to be done um, as we try to address a more flat organization. I guess all, all these have incumbents in the positions and it's just internal yes. transfers yes. and uh, yes. internal promotions, it's not yes. creating a new position. And okay. it's not creating a new position and it is and the reason, the reason of the further change is to um, very carefully try to address the workload that currently is existing with one less person is really what it is. I mean, there will be one fewer position in that and it will be the top position that will no longer be there. Okay, any um, other questions? Okay, we'll um, move those forward and then um, future agenda setting. Do not have any items related to that? Did you want to bring up your request? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, I was staring at this my screen. Um, so I had asked in our um, April meeting to talk about recess. I thought that it was coming forward in the June meeting. I tried to find the discussion on the video, but I think that was like a five-hour meeting, and I stopped searching at some point to like find it because I wasn't going to rewatch the whole thing. Um, so I don't, uh, Brenda, uh, you had said you thought it, we had planned to put it in a retreat, but now the retreat is in July. Andrew, you made some comments about retreats not including actionable items. So my question for us is if we want to bring this forward um, so that we can prepare for 1920, what would the board like to do um, and where would it fit into our agenda? And Andrew, I, I know you had some comments about that too. Yes, my, my thought was, <clears throat> although, the, although it was partially, there's no legal reason that we couldn't have an action item in a retreat, it's kind of, or we could have it, we could discuss it in the retreat, I suppose, and then still have it as a voting item under the, um, posted for, wait, when are the July meetings though? Are they? 15th and They're both after the Fourth. retreat? Oh, yeah. Okay. So oh, I guess I just wanted to make sure that you know if we how did did we did we talk about this in the in last month's agenda setting meeting and decide to put it on the retreat or did we just just miss yeah. this one? We did. Okay. I so, recall deciding it was would be part of the whole strategic framework discussion as, as part of the wellness part of that strategic framework discussion and then we would decide what things we would want to pull out of that for um, potential policy changes or action items. Is that, I don't know if anybody else remembers. So then if we had the retreat and discussed it on the 11th, it could be put on the 15th. The 15th. So we would have it in the retreat. It would be a natural topic in the retreat, but we also would put up uh, proposal in the for 
discussion and action in the July meeting cycle then? 15th, right. Yeah. And then vote on it July 6th. 22nd. Yeah. Would, it, would it be helpful for me to draft some language around what I am thinking in terms of recess to bring it on the 11th um, so that we could share it and I could certainly work with Melissa on that. I'm just, I just want to ensure that we're, oh. I'm prepared on the right. 11th yeah. with whatever we need to do so we can move forward and however that looks. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe with John, is that, well, who's... Yeah, we had done we had done We've some preliminary about. work, and I'm trying to figure out where things are at. I'm sitting here because we had pulled some research, mm -hmm. done some polling of schools to understand what they were currently doing with recess. I remember at the time. Um, do you want to just connect after this meeting, Michelle, to talk about what we need to do to prepare for that 11th July 11th meeting, John? <coughs> yeah, are we thinking? Are we thinking policy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it would be a conversation at the retreat, but. Christina's point is just, you know, prepare so that it doesn't take yeah, another. And we might need Okay, we can little. just set up a meeting yeah. and then we can yeah. I think determine what we and want to do that. Potentially okay. would be on our, for, at our work session on the 15th as, yep. a, as a discussion item and then a vote, then vote on the 22nd. On the 22nd. Okay. So you're right, July. if you come, July. If I come prepared. So, if you, so if, if you, John, Melissa, you know, come with some example for us to react to, then that speeds the process along. Okay. We can do that. I'll let up. I'll connect with y'all. Thank you. Rhonda. Um, so that takes care of recess. But so by, I just want to be clear on this agenda setting. We have a discussion at the table about what we'd like to see. Where does the discussion go? Does someone take notes on it um, and determine that it will be on an agenda? You know, because it's it's not clear to me how that's working. Because I also think it would have helped this situation as well. Um, so there's some new thing we're doing where we discuss what we'd like to see on an agenda and we make a determination that we would like to see it or we don't. And then what happens with that discussion? Is the, you know, are you, one of you taking notes well, I think on we that? Did, well, I think, I think Sandy's recording the, the meeting and I think, the, I think we've just, um, I, I'm, I don't, personally, I, I don't want to set a, precedent of voting to have things on the agenda because then it suggests that a majority is required to even discuss an item and I don't think anyone really intends that. So I think this is an additional opportunity. Board members still have the right to put something on the, mm -hmm. on the agenda. This is just a, maybe a streamlined way to, to, get, to get something out there that was maybe overlooked like this. The recess thing may have been on just a retreat and mm -hmm. so but I guess my question is then are you taking what she's writing down into your weekly meeting when you're developing an agenda like well if we decide at this meeting that we want something on an agenda then Sandy puts it on the agenda and it come you know and then it's up to the uh, district administrators to determine you know and I, I mean I but I think also the question becomes it's not it's it's often timing you know, we, we um, <clears throat> need to have conversation about what makes sense in terms of timing and preparation and what else is on their plate. And, and that's the intent of this discussion is to say, um, you know, otherwise I get the request and I make a decision and then the board hasn't had a chance to weigh in, you know, and then, and then you know, it, it, it gets put on the agenda, but not immediately. And there are reasons why that happened, but the rest of the board doesn't know. So, so this, this is a chance like for us to say. same same thing we were doing though. I guess I'm, I'm not understanding how it's different. It, it's just ensuring that we will, every meeting will have this as a, a placeholder so we're posted to talk about future agenda items. So mm -hmm. if anything was, so now there's, there's right. no chance, there, there's no chance that this cannot be held on the July, I think it's very clearly now that this has been designated for the July cycle. There's no, there's no, um, there might be something else that comes up on short notice or a request that um, Brenda and I talk about and I think we can, you know, additional things could be added on short notice, but this, this locks it in. So it's, there's are a you consensus reporting? to do this on the 15th, it's, this, okay. it's done already. But, okay, yeah. still. So there was another, there were other agenda items discussed at that time as well. So where are those right now? Well, they were discussed about 
we would have talked at the last one of those, we would have talked about things for this agenda, some of which were in and what was gonna be on the closed session. Okay, so, but I had brought up the dress code again, and I just, are you gonna be reporting back to us that we might be discussing this? There just seem, you know, I know when I wanna actually discuss something, I'd like to know where it's going, and, and will I get a report back that yes, you'll see it, no you won't, um, there's still more discussion that needs to be had. Where's I guess, where is it? Yeah. The dress code piece was um, actually discussed at the most recent interest city student council meeting and at that time the students were going to be reporting back to uh, i think it was judy wiegand mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, a couple of other people that she had met, was meeting that's with. what we talked about at our agenda setting meeting was that we would be taking you know that we were waiting for students so they're to still give us have, they're still we're still yeah doing okay that and that's but if i hadn't asked about it i wouldn't know so i'm the one that discussed it so i guess my question is if we're going to bring up agenda items in, in an open session and take time to do this, who's reporting back to the people who are initially, to let them know, when it's to let them know what needs to still happen, mm -hmm. who it needs to go through. Right. I guess it, you take time to discuss it and then you just hope well, that it appears point, somewhere. Well, your point is important because even for me, I got, whether I was confused or remembered it incorrectly, I thought it was coming forward tonight and then I was like, wait a second, what's happening? So I think your, your point at least what I'm hearing is how do we circle back with the person who brought it up to let them know where it's going to show I, up. I, let me just make this like super easy. I would love it if board leadership would actually give us a report on when that may or may not happen and why and what needs to still happen. Well, that's that would a, be great. That's what we did last time with the dress code. We but I haven't had any. I haven't had any report back. On yeah, that's fair. It. Okay, so we are waiting on the dress code. We are waiting for. A report from ICSC mm -hmm. right. and Michelle? I, I can just give you an update. But just send um, an email. Right. Yeah. But send an email. Yeah, <laughs> just an update. I know that there, there was discussion um, of the importance of getting feedback from all stakeholders and that we may not be able to get to the teachers because of the lateness of the, of the timing. But the recommendation and the recognition that dress code has not been addressed, and you know this, the policy since 2008. So what we are putting into the expectation handbook, if we don't get it done by then, if the, if the board is not at, at that place yet, is that we will notify, it makes it, it, there will be a notation in the handbook that says it is under revision, under review, and that as soon as that information comes forward, it would go out and go into practice or policy. The, the piece around it is just being able, the capacity to get to the students and the staff and making sure, because I, I think there's a lot of, as we started talking through and talking about it, um, there's a lot of nuances with that. So there needs to be quite a bit more discussion. But I think that, you know, if we, if we can get it done, I know Judy isn't here right now, so I'm not sure where she's at in the process, but it is underway. And it is, um, the handbook says that we will notify the community and everyone involved if we don't get it when it, because it'll change the current policy. Does that make yeah, so we've, mm -hmm. I think we have, so we have that commitment that some handbook so that we don't we get, tri so we don't, trip, don't get trip over the whoops where we would have been ready on yeah. September 18th except the binding language that the, of the handbook can't be changed. So we're going to adjust the changed. handbook to make sure. Yeah. And it's one of the few items in the handbook that hasn't been changed. Most things are pretty current policy wise. But yeah, that's a good point of work on making sure that I cycle back <clears throat> um, with with the agenda item requests. Because then it, it eliminates me from asking it again or right. sending yep. texts or yep. then I just kind of have not, and people fine. are asking and I don't have answers that I, yeah. you know, yep. just, okay. yep. thanks. Christine. So, okay, go ahead, Christina. Melissa, is there, are there any legal ramifications for Brenda and Andrew to send out an email to the board with general updates about board business if no one responds. 
Like if they were to send, if Brenda was to send an email to the, if they were to send an email, a weekly email, I'm just throwing this idea out there, just, just trying to increase communication of like what everyone's doing. Say Brenda says, okay, every Monday I'm going to send an email to the board and I'm going to just do a quick high level of here are just some updates. We're doing a superintendent RFP. We have this going on, this, this, and this. Contact Sandy if you, I don't know what the next step would be. Like do this if you have questions. Are there any issues with that? Yes and no. Um, so if it's discussing something that you have discussed at your meetings, mm -hmm. then that is probably violating open meetings. Um, if it's but what if it was just an update? Like you're not discussing, you're not getting into the details, but if you're just like, hey, we talked about this, sorry to interrupt you, but like literally this conversation, like remember at the board meeting last week, Rhonda said this, it's gonna be on this agenda topic at this date. That would be an example. I would have concerns about open meetings. Even if, even if it's strictly to talk about agenda, about, about topics? If it's about something you have not discussed, and you are sending out here's the board agenda for here's the map for the next month's board agenda of course it's always subject to open records it would definitely be something that would get released under open records which i'm well sure not an issue with that yeah. but i have concerns about discussing things in an email that you've already discussed we wouldn't be table. discussing it would be information but sharing brenda is only. discussing and it's information sharing so how do we then increase communications with the board in a more timely fashion? Because what's frustrating to me is that we never can talk to, we, I mean, things move quickly and people are working on stuff and it's really hard to know where your work fits in and, and how to support other people's work if you don't ever know what's going on. You're a governing body and you are governed by open meetings laws and, and, and that is going to, to determine that level of communication. So you're saying it's a problem if the email goes to all of us? I'm saying there's not just all of you. I'm saying the problem is is that so what if Sandy 10 to 10 it? so I'm having problems. I know. Oh, so <laughs> I, I've way been a, past my bedtime by now. Um, what if it comes from Sandy? What if it comes from Sandy? Sandy and Michelle give the board an update on where things have been. That's not a problem. Like what if so that can come in our update. It, it can come only, in your green letter update. Yeah, which we only get, you know, twice a month. That's I'm wondering true. if we just um, have, I think we just have a routine. Um, I'm starting a document so that when we get to this topic um, and there are things that we haven't covered yet, we can, we can make sure we bring them back um, for an update. I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. Starting a document where? No, I'm just for my own for myself. Oh, okay. To oh. remember what to bring, to, what to cycle mm -hmm. back through when we're here as a board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me look at. Just I look mean, we could do this because I, I just want to make sure I'm giving you the most. No, and I know it's answer. late and I'm tired too. I'm just. And that's exactly we're here, we're literally what I was actually about. asking. Is if was there something that you were taking notes on when we talked about future agenda items and. I just wondered if. Yeah, well, you know, we, we said it for that we would, we were going to have conversation at Intercity Student Council, and that's. Right. Um, and at that meeting, mm -hmm. sent it back, but obviously not everybody was at that meeting, mm -hmm. so um, right, that's what the it. communication falls through at that point. Um, so, so I think just continuing to. Um, would it be helpful if people have agenda items that they've raised and you haven't had the feedback just get those to Brenda so that she knows what is still out there what hasn't been addressed okay and then you can weigh in on we used to we used to have a weekly update from which who? I don't, I'm not looking what's that from who when Dan was here who sent it? Danny Red Sandy did. But I'm not looking to put a major thing on. Right. And we don't also anyone. have to decide now. I'm just I'm yeah, just but just to, there yeah, there needs to be. We need a, to uh, figure out a way to especially because with the superintendent search, there's going to be a lot of things happening. And as much as we can keep people in the know, 
with staying in accordance with open meeting laws. I yeah. think we should explore that and just give it some thought over the next month as we plan for 1920. That's all I'll say about that. But in the meantime, if you have agenda items that haven't yes. been put on agendas, let Brenda know. Would would she be able to do an update and then just hand it out at the board table? It has to be talk at, at your meeting. Could she hand it out at the board table? Right. Sure. Right. But it would be, would be it would be an attachment. I mean, that would be no different than sending an email. And you would attach it to it Neptune. Have to, it would be attached to Neptune. Sure. Right. Yeah. I mean, we then could you do don't that. Have, it would. You'd have Can to you probably put it as an agenda? It would have item. to be an agenda item, yeah. But like an ag like an ag agenda follow up. This is where things well, that's are. That's bringing me back to yeah. what I would do. Yeah, I there's just other said. things that could probably be done that way. You could you could probably have track agenda requests on a on a Google sheet if mm -hmm. if there was public access. If there's public mm -hmm. access. That's conducting. I that makes me really nervous. Business. I thought I thought I read something specific. Or is it? Can this just be that. covered under this? I think if you yeah, that's last item. Just to this agenda item. Right. Yeah, you definitely yeah. can do that. Just cover attachment to this. Right. Just right. Right. Yeah. I just want to also just say one other thing though. In in the interim, that's what I'm talking about too. Though is how do we when we're going two weeks and there is something else coming up? What are some other ways that we can communicate with one another? So again, don't have to decide that now. I just like to know what's going on. What? We can't. You can't. Yeah. You can't. Why? Well, yes, it's I very, know that. It's very frustrating, yeah. and I remember feeling the same way when I was new. Why can't we just talk to each other? And it just—it's the rules we're governed by, and it's very frustrating. Well, we did actually just say that Sandy and Michelle could send out a weekly email to the board with updates. So that is—that seems to be a, a solution if there are timely, time-sensitive updates. I and like I'm not I, looking. I already get a lot of stuff from Sandy and Michelle. You know oh, I, mean? I don't like, get any. Yeah, I don't. Talking specifically about agendas. Okay. I mean, I I'm think this agenda item is helpful, and to put an attachment. I'm there. not talking about agenda items. I'm talking about the work, uh, just updates of what is happening in the district that will help to inform what I'm doing because then I have a sense of what you're working on and what the priorities are that week. A good example is the tra or the, the budget hearing, right? If, if that, I know that came out in, in many different ways, but if it would have came directly to me and said, hey, this week we're doing this, and it was sort of spelled out, I, I feel like I wouldn't have missed that. So part of it is, yes, my personal responsibility. I, I just think, though, that it would be helpful if everybody had a better sense of what everyone was doing. I wonder if this is something that Drew Holt can help us with. Maybe. He's had, if he's had other districts who yeah, struggle yeah. with communication, and how do we, he's got a, a creative way. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, but thank you for commiserating with me. And it's very frustrating to not just be able to get together and talk about yeah. stuff, but mm -hmm. there's just no it way is. to do it. You know, it's mm -hmm. just not possible. Okay, anything, anything else? Okay, that concludes the organizational support. Do you need to, we do have the option to go back into closed session, but you need to go. Okay, so we'll go into closed session. Ten minutes. Ten, we can do it quickly, I think, right? Okay. Take that. Um, so I'd entertain that motion. Can you leave it? Somewhere if somebody can find it, you got to read it. I move that the board reconvene in closed session room 337, pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 19.85, paren 1, paren e, deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business. Whenever competitive or bargaining reasons required a closed session, more specifically to wit, after school programming contracts pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 19.85, Paren 1, Paren G, conferring with the legal counsel for the governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to become involved, to wit, potential litigation matter in pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 19.85, Paren 1, Paren C, considering employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. In pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 19.85, print 1, print F, 
considering financial, medical, social, or personal histories or disciplinary data of specific persons, preliminary considerations of specific personnel problems, or the investigation of charges against specific persons, except where par print B applies, which, if discussed in public, would likely to have substantial adverse effect upon the reputation of any person referred to in such histories or data, or involved in such problems or investigations. To wit, emeritus break in service, staff investigations, and safety and well-being of staff. The board may return to open session to vote on items discussed in closed session. Yep, right. Is there, there a, a second? second? All right, second. Sandy? Sandy. Aye. 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 Abstain. Carried 7 0. You should get those smiles <laughs> off your faces. Okay. You have been watching the Green Bay Area Public School District's Board of Education meeting. Please visit the school district's website, www gbaps.org to view the program again. If you cannot fully access the information on this video, please let us know the accessibility issue you are having by calling 920-448-2025 or by email at communications at gbaps.org. We will try to provide the information to you in an alternative format and or make the necessary improvements to make the information accessible.